Welcome to the Metchball Grid. My name is Andre. How's it going today? It's the 15th of December. How's everyone doing? It's a Thursday. We got a stream. It's been an exciting week. Again, a parkelene has been out for just uh just a minute, just a couple days, less than a week. Um, so we're gonna be playing that today. Been trying to do a lot of content this week, let me tell you. And today was a bit of a struggle. Is out there filming some startup, and let me tell you, startup's hard. Try playing a runner in startup. It's hard. Cool, how's it going? I thought hypoxia was a double. It's interesting. Yeah, it's just a single. It's real hard to get value out of it though, because the doubles give a tag in HP. So if you're spending your whole turn to do that, is that good enough? It seems really expensive. We'll find out. Yo, Prello, how's it going? Evening, Xran, hello, how you doing? Frank as well. Yo, Jeff, how you doing? Laurie, hey, talk about a good week for Nevermore. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Um, it's been a good week. What's everyone been trying so far? So from my understanding, there's been an update on Chitegi.net. So the uh, just about everything should work from my understanding. Last week we streamed on, what was it, the Friday night and we streamed for a pretty long time. I actually kind of hurt my voice, I think, uh, but it was good. Yo, Jason, how's it going? How's your evening or your morning at this point? Uh, so we tried just about everything. There's still a lot that I haven't tried. That's not going to stop me to, to talk about like a, a tier list video. We kind of did that. So on that note, uh, you're going to put out a tier list video. Him and I met up to talk about the cards, early impressions, mind you. Jeff has been playing as a, what's it called? As a play tester. I haven't played all the cards. Hold on. I feel like I'm falling apart. And we have a tier list. Uh, the link will be in the description below. Go to Yusengren SC on YouTube if you want to find it. Uh, we did the corpse side and we're going to be doing the runner side. We've already recorded it. Uh, I'm going to edit it together and it should be out next week, hopefully early in the week. On that note, there's no stream next week. Uh, we'll be gone for the holidays, so hopefully you have a good holidays too. But we should have some content on the channel. It might just be this, which is about three hours long, like the runner side of it. I'm trying to get some more gameplay in, but I tried to record some gameplay today and I kind of, I didn't get any of it. Like none of it was good, which is always feels really bad when you spend like hours recording and you don't have much to show for it. So feels bad. Hold on. I played two games back to back with this deck, one where I played it and one where my opponent played it with the super fast borehole deck, Cole. I'm good, no complaints, played a lot of startups, scheduled the next GLC cube draft. Been playing P and Para Corpse side and Nesting Dolls, Isla Runner side. Oh, I guess Isla can do Nesting Dolls, huh? We'll talk about startup in a second. I want to see what you think Eric's ran about startup because it's way difficult. Hey, Andre, Crim Multi X Tribal seems strong and startup mostly been trying restoring humanity today. No. <laughs> Izzy, how's it going? Both almost one using the new asset. I've seen a lot of people just play like in startup, uh, just like put Keeling behind two ice and then just see if they can win. And like, I don't know. I feel like at this moment, people are playing less and less pinhole threadings. And I think that's just kind of a result of, you know, people trying out the new cards at the expense of the boring staples. Uh, but yeah, it almost kills consistently if you just can't deal with like big ice. And like, I'm playing Anarch. I think the biggest problem right now is I'm playing Anarch and startup. And let me tell you, Anarch and startup does not feel good. I'm still awake for Metchball stream. Will be oh, bar. How's it going? Been running into PAE and Tule all over the place. It's been a grind. Jason, I do think Tule is a grind. And if you want to hear my opinions on Tule and Standard, you can check out the, the, the tier list video that me and Jeff put together. In short, like I don't really like Tule. And I've seen people, I played against someone today that was playing like, uh, I don't know, I guess it's a version of this sort of list, the startup life in the bubble uh, list, if I'm not mistaken. I've also played in Standard this Catapult Turtle list. So I think we played against someone who's playing this, but they added a couple harmonics eyes. And like, it's buck wild. Like the problem with this deck is, and this ID, and maybe it just started as a whole, is that there's just literally no money in it. There's literally no money. And they have all these agendas that are like tempo negative, like super tempo negative, um, that even if you like just don't run and don't do anything, it's going to go to turn 20. Like, I don't think I've played against a Tule deck that has been shorter than 20 turns. I don't know. I'm not enjoying that. Like, it's just such a slog because you play a bit slower because you're kind of respecting their ability. And then on top of that, I'm playing Essa, which is like, I don't want to play Essa into this. Like, you just don't play your cards, which is also really not fun. But like, there's just no econ in this ability. So it takes them like so many turns of clicking for credits. They res like an on sell. And then they're like three turns later, they're still clicking for credits for it. If you trash a Regulus, that is. If you don't trash a Regulus, maybe you lose. But um, they just don't have money like you could do nothing you could come back like in 10 turns and like they're still trying to win the game because none of these are tempo positive agendas it's like real slow and it's kind of up you to close the game and then they're going out the way to make the game longer which um yeah i don't know it's been kind of like an absolute slog for both players and i don't i don't think it has a good win condition super fast bore hole okay cool 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 stacking multi-axis or playing Padma seems like two good runner strats i think Padma seems pretty good right now and as a shaper in startup um there's a lot of good charge effects Hey Lucas, been trying three different obelisks and Asa Core. 
Oh man, I haven't tried Ob and Startup, but Ob has been so fun recently. We posted a video just uh, on Monday, I think, or Tuesday maybe, Tuesday night, of the Op list, and it's it's I'm having so much fun with Op. There's so much you can do. I just want to play only Op. Hey Andre, hey D lines, testing a spicy Adam deck with World Tree turns out brain chip sticks its tongue out of P and Tula. It's like weird, right? Because it's not so much the hand size I think that loses you to Tula. Like maybe the hand size is a problem if specifically they're running maybe snare and you can't respect it, or if they're running end of the line. But I think all of those you can tech out into. Like end of the line, you just play no free lunch and then the deck has nothing. So I am worried about taking core damage, not because of what it does to hand size, but because of what it does to ontological dependence. That's the way I see it. So I don't know actually if the brain chip helps. It, it definitely doesn't hurt, right? Like you're playing it anyways, but against P, yeah. Less and less threads with more and more pinholes. <laughs> you get pinholed all the time? Yeah, maybe. I survived by pinhole. Yeah, pinhole kind of does it. Yo, Jake, how's it going? I got to respond to your email. Excuse me. Hopefully you're doing well, man. I've been trying some too late core damage, trying to finish off, finish the work with Vian Chan. It's funny to play, but probably not that strong. Yeah, it, de it depends. It depends how people, how aggressive people face check and stuff like that. Even PD feels tough in startup right now. Okay, we'll we'll transition. We're going to play the deck list of the week, but I want to talk about startup for a second. I just want to catch up on the messages. I've been playing Apex for eight hours straight and eats too late for breakfast. <laughs> Bankar Apex, can you play Ban Banar? Like you have to flip Banar, right? I'm glad you agree about too late. It's just not fun. I don't think it's really fun, but that's because it doesn't feel powerful, at least in startup. In standard, I don't think it's that much different. Like this is my thesis, right? Okay, so uh, Genchling posted this link uh, list, which is the Catapult Turtle list. And I played against this and it has the exact same issue where this deck has literally zero economy. And that's kind of expected when you play too late. Take this deck. Maybe you want to cut a couple cards, like cut the Meridians, cut the Nightmare Archives, maybe. And just play it in Sports Metal. And it's much better. It's just miles better, right? Like, I still think you can play Ontological uh, because doing core damage makes us a 3-2 at a minimum, a 2-2 or then even upsides. Just play this in Sports Metal. And it feels good. Like, it feels bad. I, I'm convinced that the core damage archetype will... Probably not be competitive in Tule. Whether it's fun in Tule is a different question. But if you just take this deck and play Sports Metal, I'm like 90% sure it's actually just straight up a better deck. So yeah, it just solves the econ issues. And you're already running 11 agendas. Maybe you can even play more agendas, right? Like drop the Ikoa and play uh, three, either Mega Pre, but probably just the um, Hyperloop, right? And you're kind of good to go. If you're playing slow as S against Tule, I'm just yellowing core damage and drawing up three points and checking archives. I'm playing a bit too slow, and I think maybe that's the issue. Maybe I should just not respect it. But like I'm you just lose to ontological sometimes, and that's kind of rough. The harmonic also plays with D-Res Res, so it does make the corp ask for credits. Yeah, it's very expensive. And I think I've played games where people have D-Res their ice and it's cost them, right? Like they D-Res the ice and now they can't raise bloops, or they D-Res the ice and now they don't have money. Uh sometimes it's good, but yeah, it just requires more economy, which is um it's rough. Padma is the only runner I consistently have a rough time with. Slamming boat and keeping a charge is hard to deal with. Sable also seems like she's a good spot. I think Sable would probably be okay, yeah. Sable's a lot of fun. I've been playing no deep dive using the new slide dog. I haven't tried out tunnel vision yet. I'll get recording the email when you get sacked. But yeah, I'll do it tonight after this. I should stop playing jank, but uh, it's jank. How can you not play jank? For sure. Man, it's fun. It's just like, I don't know. I like playing jank, but then if I spend two turns in a row just clicking for three credits, I don't think I'm playing jank as much as I'm... Uh, Looking for credit. So I wish it was someone in the middle. Watching stream, cooking dinner, keeping the kid off the counter. <laughs> kid knows where the food is. That's good. Flip it with a simulator. About to publish a list I've been playing so I can put it to bed. That's really cool, Bob. Let me know if it's published. All right. So let's talk about startup real quick because I was like kind of frightened by this. I want to put out a video talking about startup, but I don't think I'll have the time to record one and put it together before next week. And we're off next week. So there will be some loaded content, but probably won't be a lot of content over the holidays. Apologies. But looking at startup, so the startup card pool, if you're not aware, there's been a massive rotation when it comes to startup. All of the Ashes cards rotated and Ashes was such a cornerstone for startup for better or for worse. There's a huge rotation of cards, a lot of the most powerful identities to some extent. Maybe I'm just thinking of Anarch, but a lot of like the fundamental cards that kind of kept afloat the economies of just about every faction, things like Rizeki. On the corp side, we're not going to talk about it too much, but like all the big 5-3 agendas, a lot of the cards, the ice that's overperforming, a lot of the cards, in fact, almost all the cards that got banned in uh, standard were still in startup and those all rotated all at once so these cards were inherently overperforming in a bigger card pool so here we go people keep trashing my dank snares and pe we need a psa yeah there's no reason to trash snares if they're in remote servers at least so what I would say is looking at the card pool, if you just look at the startup card pool so this is just looking at every single anarch card in the startup card pool that has the word credit on it Hopefully that shows you what cards you can use as the backbone of your economy, but you'll realize, firstly, not all of these count. Like Quetzal does not count. It just has the credit ability on their text. Reina doesn't count. The Twinning doesn't count. Xanadu doesn't count. So in terms of like raw economy cards that are in faction, 
And again, you need enough economy. Like either you have to play ghost tongue deck and a lot of run events, but you might notice there's like no run events here that can keep up your economy or otherwise you're looking at fermenter liberated accounts and wildcat strike, which is actually relatively dependable. But in terms of economy engines, economy stuff you can do in Anarch, the cards you need to put into your deck to make sure you have the modicum of credits in Anarch is real difficult. You largely are supported entirely by liberated accounts and then probably for mentor to some extent, but nothing else here is an econ engine. And that's been a struggle. And I've been playing too many Anarch decks in a row that just don't have economy. And I feel like that's something now we have to actually address. I think for too long, maybe we were playing Keiko decks with companions that we were just getting free two credits a turn. And you no longer can do that. Now, how to see how this compares to the other runner factions is pretty wild, right? So, so instead of prepaid ghost tongue are both solid econ. I've played the ghost tongue engine and then I realized I don't have enough card draw. And I think that's a really big deal is that if you don't have card draw, your operation economy does not get there. So that's kind of a struggle too. But like even losing something like bravado has been a huge hit. There's not that many events that you want to play that are credit positive. But if you're playing Essa, for sure, you're considering ghost tongue. I think that's, that's definite. Yo, Stab Tabby, how's it going? I think we played a game last time, right? On the last video. Good games, eh? I still see Twitch is broken. That's good. Baza, I was hoping it wasn't because I updated the server I'm streaming to. Can you confirm that it is broken? I really hope it's not. Let me know if that works. You definitely don't have card draw, which is the huge issue. Yeah, we just literally have no card draw. Like there's no card draw. Let's see, actually, if we see the word draw, what comes up? Uh, we're going to search the word draw. So we have steel skin scarring, of course. Essa's soft card draw. Raindrops cut stone is like technically card draw if you build into it somehow, but like that's hard. Rain, uh, lose card draw, but there's literally no card draw cards besides steel skin in faction. And that's a big issue. Uh, so we have to figure that out. And that's kind of a problem. Twitch is working fine for me. Hey, Frizzy. Okay, that's really good to know. How's it going? Startup Anarch feels like it needs Proco. Hey, Richard. Yeah, I, you definitely need to do something. And that's a problem right now. I've been playing only Startup Anarch and like you just cannot, you need to spend so much influence to fix big issues. On top of that, a big thing I'm finding with Anarch and my very minimal experience too, like I haven't spent too much time trying to solve this, is that Anarch multi-axis doesn't really exist anymore. Like the cards in faction that you can use to see additional cards to try and win the game, right? Like you need to access 18 cards or whatever the numbers come out to to have a good chance of winning the game. You got finality and that's it. So the only ways you can do it are like sabotage because sabotage is pseudo multi-axis and then I think you're really encouraged to play Essa. Maybe with Lou, you can start trashing cards like with Ma and Enga, and that will be multi-axis to some extent. Uh, but like you could import Conduit, but that's again for influence. So that's already something you have to import on top of everything else. Stargate rotated and the twinning is just like very hard to support. If you're doing that, I reckon the best thing you can do with the twinning is probably prepaid. And that's maybe not the worst, but like twinning is multi-axis. Hey, Kyle, how's it going? It is multi-axis. But from like startup two weeks ago where you had, you know, Paladin Puemo and Mystic Miami and twinning, like it was super easy. But now it's actually really quite hard. Like you have to get that thing down. Then you also have to get a prepaid. Then you have to use a prepaid every turn. It's like nowhere near what it used to be. Scrubber is an opportunity as well. And I think actually Scrubber is really good in the meta because a lot of the econ options, econ options for corporations move to assets just because they don't have a lot of operations and not, not a lot of built-in economy. So I think Scrubber is probably fine. Twinning in Crim is good, but in Anarchist seems like a stretch. Yeah, I think Twinning right now is finds a home in Criminal very easily. Uh, I don't even know if it's necessary considering you have better multi-access, but I think twinning is basically a criminal import, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think Scrubber is in a good spot. Mantle rotated, Seb. Let me just catch up real quick. Solution to nerfed Anarch and start a play crim instead. I, I, I'm kind of getting to that. Could you go Anacom Ghost Tongue events package? I think Anacom rotated, right? Can confirm glitch on my end. Twitch is indeed working. Oh, that's really good, Bazid here. No, I, I appreciate that. It's good to get the update that's working. I was pl playing Proco and Essa prior to rotation and startup and felt pretty good. I've been trying uh, Nuka uh, in, in, in Anarch and I kind of like it. Like it's a card you install and then you always have access to burst draw with Essa because sometimes you just lose the cards in hand. You can't like count on Essa. Hey, I'm extremely new to Netrunner and your videos have been awesome and helping me get up to speed and understanding the cards and how decks are constructed. Thanks, Leet. How's it going? That's really, really good to hear. Um, I'm so excited that we can make content that helps people get into this game because admittedly there's a bit of a learning curve to this game, but this current game slaps so hard. So firstly, thank you for the kind words. And secondly, if you ever have any questions when you're watching live or you're watching YouTube, please ask the questions or ask in chat. And there's a big chance somebody here, you'll make a friend that will answer it before even I do. Um, so super big deal. Sabotage and finality can see 20 to 25 cards a game. Not sure what you need. No, I, I think that you're totally right. That can, but like then you only play Essa. Like, I don't think there's a good reason to play any of the other Anarchs in Startup. I agree. I think the best multi-axis package you have is all attached to core damage sabotage. So, yeah, that is what it is. Prepaid Isla was stacking the twinning on top of Maker's Eye legwork. 
<laughs> Your breakerless anarch deck was a lot of fun. Too bad most of the strong cards rotated out of startup. It's only boomerang that really rotated, right? I'm not actually sure, Paul, what else we need in that list. We know boomerang, but we still botch us and we still have boat, right? Is everyone just importing Chesva? I'd be surprised. It's a lot of influence. I think Chess was like three influence, right? Hey, sort of evil, been a hot minute since I caught a match ball stream. Well, hey, you're here now. Stargate rotated. Yep. Startup card bowl is too small. It's not a real format. I wouldn't say that. I think it's an early format, but I think it's obviously like you don't have a lot of choices if you have limited options. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's bad. At least if startup rotates quickly, I, I don't think I'd mind a limited card pool that much. Hey, Blake, startup feels like it should have more cards in it. I like the set the left that shouldn't have. I like as much as it might sound that I'm negative about the rotation and startup of some spots, like obviously there's going to be troubles and problems that we're all going to have to deal with together. I'm really glad that there's a rotation startup because I don't think there was a reason to play anything else besides the staples and startup and startup was a format that had more banned cards. Uh, like the cards that were poisonous and toxic for a standard were common in startup. And I feel like right now, while the games are much lower power and I think you're kind of more limited to what you can do, at least it's less toxic potentially. I just don't like Vacheron. I'm back into Netrunner having dropped off in the Flashpoint era. I've been really enjoying coming back to the channel after so long. Regression also, welcome back to the channel. How's it going? Poison Vial. Yo, Sophie, Poison Vial is really good in a list I haven't played. I want to play Poison Vial Revolver, and I think that's actually one of the best killer packages you can play in startup. If this update had more staple econ cards, startup would be amazing. Uh, yeah, I think staple econ is just kind of hard. Like, you're just so limited. Speaking of that, let's look at the other factions, because I think it's a, it's a bit strange. As long as the boat exists, every format will feel a little toxic. Like one of the best things right now is that people are playing new cards and trying out new stuff. So you're seeing boats so little. And I think you're probably right. Like there's a big chance that spending 10 influence in Essa on boat is probably correct because it solves a lot of the issues. Right now, there's a huge issue in startup as well, which is like Anarch does not have a killer. They have Mimic, and Mimic is really good, but then you're always living underneath the threat of running into a Stavka, an Archer, or uh, I guess a trebuchet rotated right you have a risk of running into the big centuries even like a, a ballista in theory and it could cost you the game and i think those ice are really well positioned in the meta right now barring boat but there's no boomerang it's hard to pre-botulist these things um so i think like that's an issue like you can't rely on mimic or maybe you do mimic plus turbine and then you kind of get there but it's still really hard they have the weird eight strength one now do they I'm just too negative, lol. I love everything you guys do. I love the game and everything those signals doing. Ah, oh, like I didn't mean to call you out. Anywho, um, this is criminal. And if you search the word criminal and credit, or sorry, you search the word credit and criminal, you see it's a huge list. Ma, you say numb, and numb is the possibility, but like installing your numb for four and then breaking that archer for like eight. No, you can't do it. <laughs> you can't do it. There's also no ice destruction in startup anymore, right? It's numb. You're totally right. It's numb. I feel like the startup rotation would feel okay if or when system update was adjusted to give it for me a few more basic pieces and tools. Yeah, I think Baza, that's probably right. And like, this is such a hard thing. And I do not know what Null Signal does. Did Null Signal build this set with rotation of startup in mind? I don't think they did. Uh, and it's not like a blame. Like, it's really hard to make a set that works for standard and for startup and for eternal. Like, you can't do that at some point. That's why each of these things generally has their own bespoke balancing list. But like, I think Startup exists as a really good format to get into the game, to play the game, a bigger card pool than System, uh, what's it called? System Gateway? Is that what it's called? Yeah, System Gateway. And then from there, you can maybe consider going into Standard. And let me tell you, if you've been playing Startup for the whole last year, or even for the last four or five months, if you've been playing Startup with uh, Keiko and Paladin Puemo and all that good stuff for the last couple months, those decks are 70 to 80% of what Standard is. So if you're scared, and I know card accessibility and all that, it's a bit of a thing. You can always do proxies and all that, but like you can just play standard. If you played startup last like two weeks ago, you are basically playing standard. So do with that as you will. They don't test startup right. I think they do now. Okano, how's it going? Like I know they have, they're going to do like standard balance stuff for startup. But what I'm saying is like, it's really hard for them to have a set that like, I, I don't know. I don't know how much design went into the set specifically on the goal of making startup a, a, a good thing for some reason. And that's not a, a ding at them. Like, I think they make a really great set for standard. And like, you know, uh, I'm not sure. Rizeki startup booster pack. <laughs> Tread lightly and Ampassan is the only easy way to trash ice. Oh, I guess Ampassan does say trash ice on it. You're right. And technically reprise trash is ice, if we want to say that. Feels a lot better than the last six months of startup, but I'm not sure it's good as Ash's startup. Yeah, like, 
again, I'm not saying this is worse than startup so far. I'm just saying it's different. Um, again, I did not love playing corporation as startup in the last meta. And right now corporation actually looks kind of fun. So I'm down with that. Penny Haver, Hey Orb is probably a necessity now. Yeah. Cause econ is already. Yeah. So like we're looking at the criminal list. Um, and look at the econ cards, right? Like career fair, carpe diem. Okay. Maybe Chesva, very good info bounty. Pretty good. I'd actually consider splashing it. If I'm playing a uh, run heavy deck, no free lunch is a staple pen. Weave is pretty good to very great now because of other stuff But penny shaver is great. Red team is actually pretty good. Sec testing is overkill. Zaya is just a good economic ability. Like look at the amount of econ cards. And what's wild is that criminal is meant to be the get paid faction. If you look at shaper, everything's good. Everything that has the word credit on it is like really good. Like this top row. Environmental testing maybe is a bit sus, but like these are good econ cards. There's a chance the Shaper just has all the economy besides Penny Shaper, right? Like it's so wild. Like these are all the cards that now Anarch is like looking at being like, oh, which ones of these do I import? Like is an Anarch deck importing Shaper cards? That's like kind of some way alien to a lot of players, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> no more Zeki, bad Richard. <laughs> I think Aesop's in the bad spot. Aesop's is alone. Yeah, it's definitely in a bad spot. Uh, because there's no package that really works with it uh, and World Street competes with it. But like Aesop's, I don't think was ever very good in startup. You don't have click compression. You don't have cards that really empty themselves. Actually, in viruses, maybe. But you're probably better off playing World Tree. And World Tree is basically Aesop's plus plus. Hey, House, how's it going? I've been really enjoying this rotation. Maybe it's because I haven't jumped into standard yet, but I really enjoyed getting to see a new meta. Yeah, a new meta is huge. Like getting to see and experience a new meta is definitely worth it. And again, it's just different. And I just want to point out like the difficulties you have to deal with, right? And the big difficulty is again, like look at these cards that say word draw on them in an anarch or the cards that say credit on them. And that's fine. Maybe there should be some metas where a certain faction is good and then next meta they're not good. Like that's fine. Someone has to be the best. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's hard. I've been playing anarch decks today. It's been a nightmare. Tau feels really good in startup, but it's all boat. Yeah, I think Dow is really good. I think the extra HQ pressure that uh, came in this new set's really good for Dow. I've been seeing the occasional Gateway Plus update game on JNets. There are people out there playing it. Of course, yeah. No, Droids, how's it going? There's a lot of people playing um, uh, different formats. Even like Gateway only is kind of popular on uh, what's it called on JNet, which is great. Now I don't. The sake of getting into games, like we're not going to continue this conversation too deep, but like look at the cards that say credit on in Jinteki. There's like three. They want us to res seven for Vampiro Nasa. They want us to pay seven for this, right? What are the econ cards? Bladderwort, Gift, Hansei, end of discussion. Those are the econ cards in Jinteki. Ah, I don't know what I'm doing out there. Anarch looks so grim. Crimson boats are the new best runners. They might be. Yeah, they might just be. Speaking of boats, let's maybe sink one, maybe? This is Am's list, and this is an old list that Am's is holding on to because this was the list that Am's is playing at Gunslinging at Worlds. So if you played against AMS at Worlds, uh, AMS would pull out this deck and you could gunsling, which means if you won the game or maybe if you just played the game, you could get like a nice cool promo. But secretly, there were cards that were not revealed or obviously released at the time and cards were the bad publicity package. So you have regulatory capture, a 6-2 that scales down to a 2-2 if you can speed run some bad publicity. And speaking of speed run some bad publicity, we got Super Deep Borehole. We're playing the outfit, a standard legal identity that says whenever you take bad publicity, also gain three credits alongside it. So Super Deep Borehole gives you three credits a turn. It's a bad campaign with ridiculous numbers and uh, it, you win the game if it empties. And the idea with Borehole is I'm not convinced it's going to actually win games by the win game clause, but I am pretty convinced that it is going to give you some bad publicity quickly, which is nice because that's economy. And it's going to force the runner to have to deal with this eventually. Again, pinhole be damned, but it gives us and it pushes it towards a win condition while distracting the runner, which is pretty good. As much as this card gets so much attention because it says win the game on it, I do think Vian Chen Keeling is by far in the same camp and is probably a much more playable card. So if you want to win the game by protecting an asset and play that sort of netrunner, which seems like people are doing right now, it kind of works in startup as well. Uh, yeah, you can do it. I think you really can do it. Oh, another thing about Anarch. How do you find your breakers consistently? I don't know. Ams totally deserved this deck of the week. This is really cool. Ams also did the, um, if I'm not mistaken, did the, uh, what's it called? The uh, ARG to find the K2CP turbine. Uh, so huge shout out to Ams. Deck sounds sick. Let's go. So I want to play this deck, but then I also want to build uh, like our version of the deck because this version didn't have obviously all of the cards within uh, the new set. So I think there's some things you could consider adding to this list. Maybe a Zata would be mean. I do think what I'd want to do too is I want to probably play less biotic labor. We'll see how many we need and see if we can just fast advance with audacities and the fact that our agendas get real small. And then on top of that, play something like an alternate win condition, something like hard hitting news or like even public trail into end of the line might be possible. So 
yeah, I do think there's a lot of ways to build this, but this is AMS's list and we're definitely going to play it. Someone who continued playing Hoshiko after our game, you don't. It's actually a pain to try and find breakers. It's so hard. That's another part with Jinteki is like, or Anarch is like, how do you find your breakers? You can't. Like, are we playing mutual favor for three influence? We lost Gadgetbond, which was some consistency. You lost self-modifying code that rotated. So how do you find your breakers? And then I'm playing Essa, and then Essa wants to take core damage, but I have to install my breaker before I take the core damage. But like my core damage are my econ cards. And I have, I have complaints. Let's go. I already preloaded this deck. Uh, Corp, let's go. We're standard, yeah, let's go. I want to see the good startup list. Asmund has been great splashing and breakless. I want to play a lot more with uh, Asmund. I don't, his name, we'll find his name. His name, I'm going to go through this. We're going to go through this in the news, but Asmund's name is Ausmoon. Pula, Ausmoon. I think I'm going to get that wrong. I think a lot of people are going to get that wrong. We'll go through the pronunciation guide. It's really fun. Uh, but Ausmoon seems really cool. I am actually a bit embarrassed because I think we ranked next week in the tier list video. I think we rank Ausmoon probably too low in retrospect. Um, all the criminal viruses modernly are actually really good. Getting access to a conduit on demand is like fine. Uh, but just getting a snake charmer deck sounds good. But I do think the fact that you can just pull like two um, tap worms and standard and just sit there and be like, Whoa, what you gonna do? I got more tap worms. Uh, is probably actually good enough. And I, I think we we undervalued Ous Moon in our tier list a bit. I'm so hyped for startup Tule. Why? I don't know if you heard me talking earlier about Tule, but that deck has no money and it goes to like turn 25 consistently if the runner does not misplay. And I don't like it. I really don't like it. Oh man. So sad we didn't get any new viruses. It's kind of surprising, yeah. And I'm also surprised how few weapons we saw, um, considering that it was like a very hype subtype. Um, but I think obviously future design space out of 10 or whatever. Although I did go find in Yoink a slightly different list around APOC. I run 2x mutual favor. Hey Muffin, how's it going? In Essa, messy but worked pretty well so far. I believe it. And a lot of the Essa decks are more running consistently, uh, which is really good if you have like Zenith Chip, which Zenith Chip slaps so hard. Zenith Chip is so good. Ooh, smoke. Hey, hey. Best of luck. So some of the smoke decks run fast advanced tech. Some of them are running clock. This opening hand has an envelopment, which could be a surprising thing to find in the outfit list, but we want to go fast. Now, I think we actually can keep this hand. If we top deck an agenda, we just jam it behind envelope, uh, envelopment, excuse me, unless it's a regulatory capture, in which case we don't do that. We can keep this. What kind of two layer are you playing? Because mine seems rich. I'm on HHN though. Oh, I was talking about startup. Um, in standard, like a, a bad sports metal deck <laughs> without economy, if that's your description. I do think the big secret with two-lay decks is that we need to find two-lay decks that can force the game to go fast enough where you cannot respect their attacks. And the problem right now is the decks are running like bad 3-1 agendas, where if you did nothing, it would be like 15 turns for them to score out on their own accord. And I feel like they need to be like seamless launch faster decks with only like 11 to 9 agendas, not like the 14 one-ofs, uh, which that they just cannot win the game. I tried making fast too late because it's purple Argus, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. But like Argus one pointers doesn't work. Uh, let's start with some options. Our ice is pretty terrifying. Opening with a too big to fail is like, you know, a mixed bag. But I think we want to do that. And we're not really scared of multi-axis pressure early. The worst multi-axis we're expecting from smoke is inherently going to be the twinning. Uh, but let's just go get 10 credits. And then uh, from here, we can subsidy or we can just ice up the good old doctor. And I think we want to protect the doctor. I think just a single ice wall is good enough. Yeah, I think two lay is a mystery, but like most two lay decks are kind of a a slog for both players. Can't you build the two lay as a go wide Jinteki shell game? Uh, I haven't. Whoa, cool. I haven't directly considered it. Um, nothing really comes to mind. So I'd be surprised. This is cool. I think Prognostic is a heck of a cool card. Maybe we'll see some Concertos or some uh, Spark of Inspiration. So they're not respecting hard-hitting news. Um, not that we have in this list. We have a Trebuchet, though. That could be quite good. But we want just an agenda to win with. Border Control. Okay, so we're going to ice up R&D. How much money do we need? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Server 1 and good enough. Again, now Trebuchet is massive at seven in a bad pub, but it's basically only a four cost res. Uh, resing it actually can be really rough because if they bypass it with their, uh, whatever the cheat is called for a second, I forget after image, um, that's a really bad trade for us. 
Especially because they're a run based deck. Bad publicity does that up. Prognostic smoke. I'm all aboard for this. Yeah, prognostic is sick. I'm really into this. And it's a really good way to use bad publicity. Like if we give them bad publicity, they can use that during a run with prognostic to install stuff. They haven't done it so far. Well, all we have is money. Wow, all we have is money. How much more money do we need? Like this much more? We probably should be drawing there, honestly. Hey, bookkeeper, how's it going? Greetings from Poland. I'm in the middle of a night here, so I'm not going to stick around long. Yo, thanks for dropping in. That's thanks for supporting the channel, by the way. I recently tried making Tule an Argus here. Okay, I'm going to open that link. link. Again, I'm not convinced that this is the good way to do it because there's probably so many agendas. Deep Ones Purple Ar Argus. Do you think uh, price tag is really cool in this deck? Because people do click. I'll, I'll check that out after. Going to try 3x Dule with 3x Akawa, 3x Off World Office, and 3x Dependence. I think one of the best cards I haven't seen played in any Tule deck is uh, Riot Suppression. I think Riot Suppression is sick. You told me Mantle rotated. The rotation not hit JNet. This is standard, uh, Stab. Uh, Prognostic also rotated, which is one of my worst, least favorite parts about startup is that as rotated and all the as support rotated. But yeah, we're playing standard. Uh, yeah. Go. How do we? How do we agenda? We probably should just be drawing. Like we have a window here where they can't get through this. I don't want to shuffle back the economy. Now, doing this last click was absolutely buck wild. That was so bad. <laughs> I thought we had two clicks left that we could res this and do something with it. But then we just res an agenda. That was terrible. That was that was that wasn't it at all. <laughs> you ever seen someone just crack a spin doctor? That's not a legal play. Anyways, we have to install over. That's just not a legal play. How do you fix this? We can't. We can't. But like you can't just trash your spin doctor unless you were installing over it. Like that was absurdly ridiculous. Is there any chance you'll play the new Jinteki identity? Fat Kalota, there's a there's a chance. I I'm, I want to try a swap. I haven't played it and it seems like really interesting. How do we fix this? I can't I I don't know how to fix this without drawing too. Hey, Gwen, I'm waiting to see if someone can make a good Jinteki Glacier with this new meta. I think you can. I think Ag Infusion got massive support, Gwen. Just a lot of like casual standard players don't like it. Yeah, they don't like playing uh, Ag Infusion or playing against Ag Infusion. Thank you. Uh, but Ag Infusion, Nana Civic is, is absurdly powerful in Ag Infusion. I, th I think it's really quite good. Put two cards on top. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, that actually been pretty good. Uh, but this works well. All right, we have to replicate what we've done before. So what is a draw? Then we can install res. Well, we could have done it. We had a click left. Yeah, we could have done this anyways. Nah, we can just do it. Why did we think this was so bad? Yeah, there you go. That's what you want. All right, we have an archer. Uh, it's pretty bad into after image. Um, I'm not sure whether after image needs more money breaking. Uh, they're generally bad at barriers. There's also no reason to hold double audacity. Uh, so I'm gonna throw out the archer. I don't think we can res archer in this matchup. Yeah, orb right suppression is like exactly what the deck wants to do. Do you want to take a core damage or have one click? Both of those are like very winnable conditions, and it's like so much better than uh the what's it called the um the the distributed tracing to hypoxia because you actually can do something. I think it's really good. And you have a lot of trashables, right? Like inherently you have trashables in that deck. I don't know. Seems it seems good. I, I kind of want to play it. It's a bit expensive though. I think it might be three credits. They have a misdirection. Okay, that's good. Well, they got that installed for bad pub, which is sick. Um, that's kind of compression. Oh, they didn't even use bad pub. They used their mantle credit. Did they actually make money on that run? It's two. Wow. Okay. I'm just going to biotic this because. An advancement counter here is good enough. There's a chance that the right thing is just to install a super deep borehole instead of getting the advancement counter here, but this advancement counter gets us into our biotics. They, they win the game. Also, this sounds like bait, and I'll admit it is to some extent, but I think I have enabled some amount of monetization on the YouTube side of this channel. So I think there's ways to interact with the chat and like get a super liked comment and stuff like that. And I'm not expecting anyone to do that. But if you see that button, that's what that is. And I honestly do not know what it does. 
But at this point, they were like, do you want to enable monetization? I'm like, yeah, I guess it cost me nothing. So, uh, yeah, I, I have no idea how YouTube works. <laughs> He's fishing for super things, huh? SMC on the table means we have to respect Clot. Uh, we haven't seen enough influence to say that they're not on Clot. Borehole seems cool. We have Trebuchet into Ice Wall, which is cool because it forces two things. <laughs> Thank you, Cole. I appreciate it. I sort of feel guilty playing the current meta and techie decks because they're not fun to play against. Really want to make restoring humanity work. In standard or startup? Vibes surrounded with little purple stars is what's translated to Twitch. That's really cool. Thanks, Cole. Apparently it works. All right, we're going to get that in. We're going to get that money. And then whether we ice this up or not, we'll figure it out. Uh, we Two ice is good here. Border control helps a bit, but this is getting a bit expensive. We can always pull like a big econ card. Are there any ways to get bad pub off borehole aside from its own ability? There are none. And I've been told that if you res this card while someone is uh, light the firing it, you don't win the game, even though it doesn't have bad pub or something on it. I'm not actually sure. I honestly don't know how it works. That's cool. I'll take my money. Oh man, you just ask. That's how it works. Stab, how's it going? Thank you. Nanny Grid on Archives has led some of the most funny Netrunner moments since both players. I think Nanny Grid on Archives is like very difficult to deal with. If we don't res here, they're going to lose their overclock credits. Um, it's really trivial for them to Penrose this, so I'm just not going to do anything and then see how they use overclock credits. Double Mantle. Okay, we have most of our agendas in R&D, so like this is actually a pretty big hit. A fun alternative PE deck called Meiosis on R&DB. I think one of my least favorite things, um, no res for me. Uh, one of my least favorite things is like playing uh, Sabotage into um, Restoring Humanity because there's just so many cards now in Jinteki that uh, inherently fire off of uh, face downs, right? Like they just return to hand with a, what's it called? Uh, the release of the, uh, you know, the 2-1. Let alone the fact that it just turns on Regenesis. Okay, they're pulling the after image. That makes sense. But now they don't have an SMC, so the barriers here might actually do something. Because the load, the empty clauses are linked. If you never load it, it can't be empty. Oh, that actually is the best explanation I've heard of that. That's really good. Cool. Thank you. That's very clear now. They'll have a pinhole in this deck, right? Pinhole and LT fire can take care of it, but yeah, it's it's been good. Blake, thank you. Support the stream. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, they have all the breakers. So the question is, is resing this for three credits and a bad pub worth it for us? Well, well, well. I seem to have found a loophole. Good game, my friend. <laughs> There's a clear win button. I forgot that happens. I was warned that that would happen. GIF alone is worth the read. I published more Parhelion though. I published before Parhelion though could have some changes. Oh, of the deck. What happened? There's like a nanosecond when you res this where it has no bad pub on it and you seem to win the game. Uh, so, you know, we take those. Sometimes we take those. <laughs> All right, so we could actually grab uh, an Atlas here. We are at two bed pub, so our thing is a 4-2 right now. But we actually could grab an Atlas here. Wow, we they're actually ugh, thinking. Like, they are so close. If they had one fewer card, they would have lost the game because we can pull the IZF and Audacity it. But I think with this hand, we just pull an Atlas. No, we can't Biotic the Atlas, but like we could consider Audacity with the Spin Doctor. I just don't think the Spin Doctor draws heat while this is on the table. I guess we draw once, but yeah, that's scary now. HQ is open. I just wonder if they'll have to worry about this. Just click three. They have all their breakers. Technically, we already won. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll still play it. You know, good sportsmanship. Simul chip is down. They have one card in hand. Apparently, the borehole win is described as an extinction event in the code, which I think is extremely metal. Shishu, that's really cool. Is that like a term that's used in, in code in general? I don't think I've heard that time. This technically threatens a clot, but if they want to pull their SMC uh, clot with simul chip, they are going to have to destroy this thing. And this is like the weird state where like their corporation, or sorry, their the runner, uh, allows the borehole to take a couple turns because milking bad publicity is actually quite good. I've won the same game and never heard twice. All right, they're checking it. So they're running. All good. We want to wait for prognostic triggers at every paid ability window, which is pretty hard. Could have overdrawn, shuffled back the IZF with spinny. We want to keep it in hand because we'll buy out get out next turn. So they have two bad pub. Um, the trebuchet is worth resing just because of the bad pub it gives us. Wondering what was the lore behind the borehole completing was? 
well, you, you win. You get to the bottom of the earth, and that's where they keep all the gold. If you played Spelunky, this would make sense. So this is a trebuchet. And they actually need a fair bit of strength here for the after image. So if we border control them, they can't really get back. Now, that being said, we just got another bad pub, so we're at three. Me, when I win by destroying the planet I live on, oil companies be like, what has the environment ever done for you, you know? So they can't run back this turn. If we raise the ice wall, they break it for one. I haven't finished Spelunky, spoiler alert. Okay, apologies. Um... There's some good stuff down there. All right, they use the mantle. So if we actually border control them there, do you have to fight an eggplant? If you're lucky, you do, I think. I'm going to protect this. Like, obviously, this is a bit nonsense. But when you have a borehole, like, come on, overclock us. They actually can't deal with the trebuchet. Prognostic ping one, installing a Penrose. That breaks barriers this turn. That's pretty cool. I really didn't realize I didn't have a decoder. Now they're running here. This is a mouseless. If we res it, it fires. This actually fires. Is it good to be on three credits? No. But they don't have stealth to boost here unless they like simul chip away a mantle to get a mantle, which we'd be very happy. Yeah, we want them to use their SMC so they don't threaten Clot. So, like, we're being generous. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, they die. We win. Yeah, now we win. Are you playing Startup today? Maybe. Yeah, now they're on one card. So, uh, they could Clot us, though. That's the only issue. Oh. Oh, they undid it. Yeah, they'll be on one card, but I'm wor I'm worried that they have Clot. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Now they don't have Clot. But that's what I'm saying. They could remantle. So they can trash something to pull back something back. Oh, wait. They trashed the Misdirection. What are they getting back? SMC? They have three mantles in this list? Whoa, they have three mantles. Okay. So they don't die, but they no longer threaten fast events. Yeah. It'd be fun if you win the game card, lost you the game, but alas, no, it will eventually lose us the game. But like at some point we have two twos that we just pull with the deck with the Atlas. Yeah, if they took the damage, they might lose. Um. Oh yeah, that's on you. Now you should. Cool. Yeah, they're just trying to break on approach. I do that a lot. So single access here again, just about every agenda is an R&D barring the SESIF, and I think we're on 9 or 10. Oh, feels bad. That's a good one. Uh, mind you, this is now a 2-2. We've done it. We have successfully sped run this. Ooh, interestingly enough, we get to trash nothing of value uh, when they trash our borehole, if they trash our borehole. But the problem now is also we have to ice up R&D. They have 13 credits. We have four bad pubs, so this is only getting easier to run. We don't have money here. We could do install. Audacity the as yef, and I think that's probably correct. Because we have a spin doctor, right? And knocking whatever these cards out of hand, they must be good. Having no HQ, though, is pretty bad. We can get rid of the ice wall, it doesn't actually do anything. We hit a Maker's Eye and a Sure Gamble. Okay. Okay. Daily cast. They have a lot of money. They don't have cards in hand. If we top deck an Audacity, or if this stays and we top deck a Biotic, we could kill with an as yef. Imagine we trash the borehole. <laughs> hey, Crow, how's it going? Fancy seeing you here. What's, what's someone like you doing at a place like this? Does the borehole stay for another turn? It stays. Again, once you steal one regulatory capture, let alone two, I think you're feeling pretty good. But like the top deck, we're in top deck city mode, right? Like if we get a hostile, we're on game point. The problem is like we need to get a hostile. Is there a point where you overinstall the borehole yourself to stop bleeding bad pub? Uh, no. Because they still have to trash it, or we win. I swear, if we lose another. Okay. 
All right, good. Hostile reg capture our game winning here. Yep. Yeah, but that's the thing is we have to break lock now. And as soon as we draw, it's really ugly. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Hopefully we get that. You still need an extra two cards in hand for Audacity Asiaf. Uh, but regulatory capture is a 2-2, so we don't. And um, what's it called? Uh, Hostile is a 1-2. So yeah, if we need Asiaf, or sorry, if we need to um, Audacity out, we do need something else. But like, this is a 2-2 now. We have five bad pub. But here we just pull an Asiaf. Or sorry, we pull an Audacity. Or even a border control. Uh, uh, we could fill, we could afford a buy. They didn't run? I think we just pull a regulatory capture with this, right? I'm going to need you to stream until you win with Borehole. I have to, I'm going on holiday in a couple of days. I don't know if we can commit to that. Oh, all two twos. Whoops. All right. Game points on top of the deck and we have a shuffle ability. So we can always break lock if we need to. Ooh, burn. It's going to be a bit like this is going to come down. We're not protected this, but it's done for us what we wanted to. And they still have to deal with it. Admittedly, dealing with it is mm, free. But yeah, we top deck a hostile. We top deck an audacity. We top deck a biotic. We went to all of them. Oh, excuse me. That's on me. Listen, if you need an instant win button when you run, run out of energy. I'm right there. If we need an instant win button, we just de-res this thing and then we re-res it. I appreciate it. All right. They draw a card for smoke. Again, threatening a clot could be like a, a thing that they can do. Where are you going on holiday? Maybe beautiful British Columbia, Brennan. No, I wish. Uh to go to British Columbia, not to to not celebrate with my family. My family is actually real swell. They's uh, they are nice people, and I don't see them a lot. Not respecting the Q loop clot? Oh, that's a good point. Oh, Maker's Eye, cool. So now we're not gonna draw into our wooden con unless we spin Dr. Shuffle, which by golly, we might. q -loop Claw is so stressful because if you see the top card, you aren't allowed to draw anymore. Yo, Sanjay, I've been there before. I've seen the top thing and you're just like, oh, played, cool. Uh, click for credits. And then your opponent's thinking like, what are they doing? What they've been drawing through. I don't think they know the top. Should be packing for my flight to Germany, but never under streams. Cool. Oh, well. Well, well. So... I already won this one. So nice. Try. <laughs> cool. Saw three, steal, steal, uh, steal five. Okay. <laughs> oh man. That was so bad. It was a maker's eye to see three and they still regulatory Alice hostile. And like, not that surprising considering we drew very few agendas to this point, like 18 cards left. Um, but if in the early game, if we drew agendas, we actually had something there. We just did not draw them. <laughs> uh, thanks for the game. That was fun. Yeah, that's pretty wild. That just happens. So what else is coming up, right? Like, so we didn't have fast events pieces. We had only, this deck should be on three audacity. I'm pretty sure. I think it's so good. Um, but the three biotics actually kind of look good. And they were teched against uh, tags. Um, Cause they don't have to spend really money. Both teams tried hard. Cheers. I wonder what this bad pub deck would look like without the borehole. Not that I don't love it. Um, I honestly think the borehole is a good part of the deck. Like without borehole, you cannot play regulatory capture with any consistency. And regulatory capture is worth playing. Now, like admittedly say that they didn't have uh, the after image, like say that they struggle to deal with trebuchet. Mind you, we're also not playing bulwark for some reason. Like imagine we had a bulwark on the remote server. We're not playing bulwark for some reason. Why are we not playing bulwark games? Games. Why? Deck builder. This. Edit. Did Am I didn't read the full write up. Did Ams talk about Bulwark? I'm gonna drop two envelopment. A whoredom. Uh Bulwark. I actually like the mouse list is good, but I like having an end the run. I think they said in the description that he would sub in Bulwark. Okay, cool. Bulwark envelopment, yeah, I think that's so. Bulwark is really good. If you're not familiar with it, it's a 10 res, but it's a bad pub res, and it has really good subroutines, including trashing programs and, of course, ending the run. And it's real big. It's real big. Uh, so it's really good. And, like, it's a three sub ice, so it's really good against, not that envelopments weren't, but it's really good against um, a boat and, and boomerang and all that sort of stuff. Corp, standard, let's go. Oh, I didn't label it. Hold on. 
There we go. Straight across the street in Van, the Victoria scene. Those I met at last. That's great. The Vancouver scene or like the West Coast scene, hey soup time, uh, for Netrunner in Canada seems really good. A lot of really strong players there, and it looks like they have like a very vibrant uh, regular meetup. Super jealous. There's a Monday meetup in Montreal, and like I just can't make Mondays, so hey, thanks. You too. I'm pretty sure soup time is new to standard. Uh, playing kit, kit's cool. Uh, kit does give some of that um, some speed. I also think this deck probably shouldn't play wake up call. I don't know. We're not running into a lot of boats recently, but maybe. Andre's the Garfield of Netrunner. Sanjay, that's so offensive. I do not know what a more offensive term. <sighs> Excuse me. I can imagine some. <sighs> Garfield of anything is not good. What are you talking about? Runner trashes on Bulwark, though. They do. They do. But like, it's good for paperclip. <laughs> All right, opening in. We got a hostel. We slammed the hostel. We are now kind of on game point, right? Like we just got 10 credits and a 5-2. Bet you love lasagna too. You're doubling down, Sanjay. I do love lasagna. I really do. He means the Richard Garfield in that runner. Appreciate it. Thank you, Metacension. Only just realized you said that because of Mondays. I don't even know what I said about Monday. Oh, because of Mondays. Okay, now actually it came together. I, I see why you said the Garfield thing. There's a problem where there's not only stream delay, but on top of that, because of restream, I'm reading the restream chat, so there's delay on top of delay. So if I say, you know, how much I hate Mondays, and then I get called Garfield, which, again, we can agree is an insult. Uh, it's like 15 seconds too late for me to piece it together. So sometimes you have to walk me through this. Playing this is kind of bad. We have an audacity though, and we're gonna need some amount of money. I don't honestly know if Kit's gonna be running on this click. Valid. <laughs> Garfield and Netrunner and I took that personally. I grew up reading Garfield uh, because you could get those like, you know, really long, uh, strange shaped books at the library because we grew up kind of at the library. And I thought Garfield was so cool. And then in, equally, I thought obviously like Calvin Hobbes is really cool because we had it at the library and it still today is very cool. Garfield got less cool over time. Family Circus, I don't think it was ever cool, but that was also the library for better or for worse. But yeah, Calvin Hobbes is still very enduring, but that sh should surprise no one. I feel like it's kind of insulting to compare the two. Hey, Bulwark, that's good. Oops. That was a misclick. Go. Now this is going to be a code gate, but like an eight strength code gate is a good code gate, right? Calvin and Hobbes will never not be cool. Yeah. I have the full collection just next to me. It's great. It only gets better as you get older. It is straight up just really, really good. It is aged quite good. Oh, it's a Palace Cafe deck. Um, I really hope they're not trying to um hit us with the uh the chameleons because those are not going to scale well. I think the last time I made a similar comparison, I said you were the Roman Mars in Everner, which I think is a very apt and compliment comparison if that helps. I do know enough about who Roman Mars is, but I've only listened to one or two episodes. I think he has a better voice than me, though, but I appreciate it. That was a nostalgic moment. Those books had a very unique shape. They really did. And it's because they were like the three strip Garfield comics. So they just, I think it's the only book I've ever seen that's also in a three strip shape for whatever reasons. Rashida, if you trash that. Ooh, we could wake up if we wanted to. Choose an installed piece of hardware or non-virtual resource. There is a chance a baseball bat can come in to take down the cafe. If we actually had the ADZF in the remote server, we could threaten the cafe. And then if the cafe was protected, uh, we could like audacity out the ADZF in the remote server. And that would be lethal. That'd be a really cool play. But hey, we're trying to win. Roman Morris has such a listenable voice. Very apt comparison. <laughs> I was ready to walk into that as an as a, as a insult, but I appreciate how the ending of that changed. Calvin Hobbes only gets better. You start to see all the philosophy. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. And um, the guy who wrote it, whose name I don't remember right now, I don't know. I think everyone respects the way that he dealt with merchandising for weird, weird, weird reasons. I have the big hardcover collection, but I never read it because it's so unwieldy. The big CNH collection. That's exactly what I have. It's on the shelf right next to this desk, and it is incredibly unwieldy. Um, I don't have a coffee table, so I don't really have anywhere to, to, to put it, but it fits like in a Calix shelf. Bill Watterson, thank you. Um, and it's good. It's really great to crack open and, and just kind of 
give him the reads. You also feel like the difference. Obviously, he got better, like most people do, at the thing he was doing over time. So the kind of the tone changes a bit. Like the philosophy, I think, comes through a bit harder uh, later on. And obviously, the art got a bit more ambitious. All right, can we audacity this? Do we need to? Do we need to? 12 credits, it'll be 14, maybe 17. This hand's good enough. Double audacity is a bit ugly. We could advance this. I don't honestly know if we need to because we don't have a play next turn. Probably should draw once for ice. Okay, well, order there was a bit low. As marketing for NSG, I should look into if I can get Bill Watterson into Netrunner. <laughs> how, how, I really wonder, how is the outreach on NSG? Like, how often do people hit up, uh, you know, some of the bigger names on the internet to say like, oh, it's a chameleon deck. That can be quite rough considering the strength of our ice is actually quite high. But how often do people reach out to like, you know, magic players or like, Hey, Hearthstone, have you, are you tired of a death knight? Do we wear as an eight strength bulwark? Yeah. Cause it gives us a bad publicity. Everybody who's cool respects the way he handles merchandising. <laughs> he did a guest trip in pearls before swine. Brennan, I don't know what pearls before swine is. Builded. I think the other thing I grew up at the library, uh, reading that's three strength, my friend. Oh no. You, you want to do the Gordian, I reckon. I think they might have misclicked. But the other one that's really good that I also have the big compilation I haven't finished was Bone. And Bone is really good. Now, this thing just ends the run and we get two. But um, yeah, I, I haven't finished Bone. I don't know how Bone ends, but Bone is the other one that we picked up the first couple editions at the library and just absolutely loved it. And it's an other sort of kind of, I don't know, one guy working at, at his desk, I reckon. Uh, from home, kind of self-published early enough, on enough, and I don't know if y'all know Bone, Bone's great. Yeah, of course, do it up. I'm gonna be moving soon. I have so much old OG cards, I have no idea if I want to bring them with me. OG Netrunner? Um, I think you can do some cool stuff with OG Netrunner. I have a whole bunch of OG Netrunner cards. Some some nice folks have uh, have kind of shipped me stuff, and I've collected from other people in the meta who've tried to get rid of stuff, and like it's really nice for Cube. Like You can combine them with original Netrunner, which is quite nice. Oh, I think you want to do that during a run. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, you want to do that during a run, though, because of the bad pub. Marvel Snap has stolen all of my gaming attention. The economy is terrible, but the game is fun. The economy is... It's good if you don't want to be, like, a, a hyper player. Like, at some point, it just says come back tomorrow. And, like, it's totally fine. I think that's fine. The economy of buying bundles is massively expensive, but it's, it's not win more. It's just a cosmetic. But it's, like, way more expensive than you'd even imagine it could be. Uh... But other than that, oh, that's a mouseless. That's ugly. If that was a nice wall. It'd be fine. Uh, the game's really good. I'm going to look for a deck to play tonight. It feels appropriate to do because I'm doing union action tomorrow and Saturday. Cool. Calyx is 30 by 30. Yeah, it's a bit more than 30, I think. I think it's like 30.5 or 31 or something. They paid nine for that privilege. Now, the mouseless, unfortunately, is a code gate, uh, which means they can break it. But that will be all their money. But yeah, maybe we should just fast advance this. We just had nothing else to jam. I used to read those Garfield comic collections and would insist on showing my parents every fifth comic. I'm sure it was awful for them. I did love them as a kid, but they have not held up. They definitely have not held up. How's it going, by the way, D&D? I do think I showed my parents something like, this one's so funny. Some of them are probably good. Farside also felt, fell very easily into that category of great stuff from the library. I think Farside's still quite good. Uh, we do a net? Interesting. The new, is it bigger than a bread box of the, what's it called, of the Calyx? I guess I could make a cube. That was the pool that made me first draft format so damn nostalgic. It's really fun. And like OG Netrunner is really strange because there's so many cards that do like the similar thing. There's like 12 different ice walls that, or like wall of statics that do slightly different things. So like you are going to see a lot of cards. Also, there's like 300 mimics. Like there's just like 20 killers for some reason. Okay, uh, we're at two bad pub. We can be on three this turn. I think we will be. Draw. Well, that's what we needed. And getting the ice wall in front of the bulwark means it's like basically damn near impenetrable. This is where actually having a, what's it called would be really good. Like they cannot contest a borehole. It's a big one. So we ice up. I think we just ice up R&D. I feel like just having double uh, bad barrier into good barrier is good enough for the remote server. They'd have to like e-grid or something. So we can just put this R&D and we'll just play this while we can. Uh, it threatens the res on this. And we're at three bad pub. So we have a three two that we can draw. And then if we can duck somehow, uh, we can get 
uh, two two real quick. Probably because it's TCG, not an LCG. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just because of booster play. Isn't there a four four agenda in ONR or something weird like that? I think there is. Yeah, I think there is a four four. Um, I forget the name. I think there also might have been a three three, but I never played. I was like way too young when ONR came out. Tyco extension. Thank you. I can fit thirty centimeters in a whole calyx. Thirty cm's. Guess I can make a cube. Excuse me. There's a 3-3 three three with good text. There's some really wild stuff. There's like Economy Adonis card that costs zero to res. Like it was kind of weird because the rarity like really played up. There was just some cards that were absurd. And in ONR, very importantly, you weren't limited to three of any card. So a lot of the best decks were like eight or nine of a single card, which is really hard when you need to source eight or nine of a single very good card in a limited card pool. All right, like we don't have a play here. Oh, that's a play. We would audacity this. We definitely audacity this to give it a counter, which is pretty buck wild. But yeah, if you see like ONR list, like you see some of them and it'd be like, okay, I'm playing nine scorched earths and then like 10 tagging cards. And then just the, there was an economy card, I think on runner that said like, give you 10 credits. And then at the beginning of your turn, lose a credit. And then if you can't lose a credit, you like lost the game. It was meant to be some sort of like ridiculous uh, contract with ridiculous loan rates. Oh, this is gonna be expensive for them. Uh, they can do it maybe. Uh, yeah, and then the idea is that runner decks just ran like nine of them and they just kept playing them and then tried to win the game before it matters, which kind of sounds fun. Loan from Chiba. Thank you. This looks like it's just the coding the chameleon deck. I am convinced you to play last week. Izzy, I have just begun to forgive you for that. Uh, but this probably has multi axis. You can also buy out the loans instead of losing. Okay, so they egraded the bulwark, which makes sense. So now we just need to get another ice wall in there. And then we have like, we're in business. They keep running our stuff. And I think they're keep like a border control here would have been disgusting. Like a border control here would have been game winning, but I feel like they're going to get away with this as long as they have the credits. This is one credit. Then this is six, seven, eight, nine. And this is some amount more. So I honestly don't know if they did the math here because uh, this might be difficult. And like strapping two bulwarks in a row now doesn't make a lot of sense because if they use the Gordian, it will stay strength. ONR has a sea source like card you can play turn one as the corp. Wait, actually? Tracing is also really weird in ONR because as a, corp a runner, you cannot participate in traces. They functionally did work differently, but you cannot participate in traces until you have a, until you have a link card, if I'm not mistaken. All right, this is firing. Need to see Gordian Blade Kit. Gordon Blake kid's like holding on. It's like barely squeaking through. We needed a border control here. Like they can't afford to go through this. Just get the run ended. But like stealing this puts us off game point. They're, they're doing good. They're not taking a tag. I could see why they wouldn't want that. They lost a pre-show. Sure that's fine. Yeah, you have to use base link to participate in the trace and owner. The bidding is blind. Yeah, that's the difference. It's blind bidding. Which like, I don't know. I don't know if that sounds more fun. Maybe it is more fun. Okay, so we just have to put any ice in front of this and they can't deal with it. A trebuchet would be good. Unfortunately, it'll be a code gate. So we want a low strength code gate. Private dating. Oh, man. Really? Report. Okay, uh, we could draw and jam. Have you seen the half run op combo? Mm, can't say I have, but I'm assuming it's just like border control half run or I don't know. Something like that? Uh, Probably draw it to jam. Yeah, like that's fine. They can't get in two turns in a row. Right? Right? I think blind bidding is obviously more fun IMO, but I think FMG changed it because it punishes new players for not knowing how to do it. I do think that was a thing that Null Signal Games brought up, that like tracing is not as interesting as it could be, where it's just kind of like, do you have more money than them? Um, and I still think cards like that are interesting, where like credit break thresholds matter. That being said, I do think cards like mid-seasons are kind of more where I want to see tracing, where it's more like maybe the difference. And so people consider how much they spend on the trace. I think that's good fun. Alpin has it going, why not Atlas Train here? Because uh, we don't really have a reason to. We drew this too late and we just score this out and then we can Atlas uh, the last one. Because if we Atlas train, it's not like, it's not a train, right? Like if we do install advanced audacity, it just gets us points, but it doesn't get us a new Atlas counter. Like we're not playing Titan. 
if I'm not mistaken, if I didn't miss anything. So we'll score this. I guess we trash the Mausolus? Do two, we hit an Egret and a Paola. Okay, uh, honestly, Ice Wall is kind of really good. Weird how that is. And we're on three bad pubs, so we have a three, two. Lucas was saying that? No, uh, June was saying that from Null Signal. Unless you're talking about Izzy, there's a whole talk on YouTube by the FFG designer whose name escapes me. Yeah, th oh, that's Lucas, yes. There's a really good talk you can find. If you search, it's Lucas Litzinger doing a talk at the NYU game club thing. It's really nice. You see, he goes through like early spreadsheets talking about the different factions and like the different color pools and like the factions that used to exist but don't exist anymore. Some really cool stuff. I think was thinking install advanced ice. Uh, I don't think we need to because now we win, right? Like they can't stop fast events. And so we just do this. I'm going to do the uh, what's it called? Regulatory, which is a three two. Survey two, advance this. Cool. Practice 2014, Lucas Ledsinger. That's the title of the video. Just found it. Is it the NYU one? I can't believe you kept getting in. That was wild. I do think that was a borehole, potential borehole win, win, or that's the sort of deck where like borehole is a problem they have to deal with, and then that can help you fast advance out from hand. Yeah, we win next turn. There was an element that existed when many traces were going off where the corp boosting to force the runner to boost made future traces easier to land with both players being poorer. That like, you, if I understand what you're describing, like that sometimes happened when you like third punitive, but like tracing for fun to lower the credits, it's like really hard for that to happen because you're generally spending an operation. Really difficult. It's like a person encounters Stavka and you trash a three cost and then ob half run and destroy their sentry breaker a boat, then Stavka fires. Okay, hold on, Armando. That seems interesting. It's like, so a person encounters Stavka, you trash a, th you'd have to trash a four coster, right? To get the half run, because half run's a three coster. No, half run's a two coster, you're right. You op a three coster, then you get the half run, then destroy the sentry breaker boat, then Stavka fires. Whoa, firstly, that is really cool. And I think someone pointed it out in a comment and I did not understand what it was. But this is the idea. Okay, hold on. So you're playing op. Oh man, this is the spiral where this channel just becomes an op channel. And then like Jeff's channel becomes just an op channel. Then like never in a content, it's just op for some reason. Yeah, I'm Rhonda. I think I know what you mean. Warhol seems suspicious like a runner card infiltrating a corp deck. It's honestly pretty good. It's like not bad. So Stavka says, when you res this ice, you may trash one of your other installed cards. If you do, this ice gets plus five strength for the remainder of this run. Okay, so the idea is that you res this, and then at that same window when you res this, you get to trash another card to make the seven strength. Okay, cool. That tracks. But the idea is, then you can go get half run because you trashed a card. So as long as you trash a resed installed three coster, um, you can go get half run. And then when you res half run, you may trash another card from HQ. And if you do, or choose trash a card from HQ, mind you, if you do choose one installed runner card, that card's abilities cannot break subroutines for the remainder of this run. So the idea is that they are now encountering the Stavka and then they can't use whatever breaker or uh, like hardware that you target. And then the Stavka will fire. Right? Ob is extracting all the Netrunner streamers. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. There's just so many weird decks you can build. Like I want to build the Keeling up. Okay, cool. That seems sick. That actually seems kind of cool. Um, I'm kind of into that. Are there other ways you can do it? Um, you need to trash something when the runner encounters something. So in theory, you actually could do that to any ice Armando, right? Like the runner could run into like, I don't know, whatever's game winning. And as long as you have something like a Mavirus, you can at the same time trash a Mavirus that's installed in any server uh, to go get the half run on that server. We can be an Ampere channel and quit quirky and different. Oh man, I don't like Ampere at all. Uh, so there's actually easier ways to do it. I think Stavka is like the nice one because it trashes only breakers though. But like you could do that into a trebuchet or ideally and then even trash a boat. Yeah, as long as you can find a trashable three cost at instant speed. And Stavka is like a cheat there. Stavka can like cheat that out. I'll be an Ampere channel. Obviously, super cool. Not my cup of tea for sure. Oh man, it's so fun. It's so fun. That's a really cool interaction, and I'm I'm worried about being an op deck forever. But yeah, Mavirus is a really easy one, and Mavirus actually does see play in a lot of these lists, on the basis that um, uh, the, on the basis that 
Mars is really good and it all, it also allows you to get Mana Garm and Mana Garm is just like a very, very good card to get instant speed, let alone it works with um all the other win approach stuff, right? Like Nana Civic works really good with Mana Garm. Um, what else works really good with Mana Garm? Um, Forma Carry, some really good stuff you can do. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. Um, three cost slot is like not that bad. Like you are playing three costs in your deck. I think that's actually quite reasonable. Not gonna lie now that Palace works, that deck is a lot of fun. Excuse me. Now that Paolo works, oh, that deck is a lot of fun. Did it not work before, or like you have more targets to use it with? I feel like that deck wants to play Nuka, right? I think that's the very playable in Shaper unique connection that you have access to. And Per and Ob have in common that you just see a bunch of random stuff coming out of nowhere. Yeah, except Ob has like a game plan, and that's kind of valuable, isn't it? Yeah, Paula should work. I, I wasn't aware that Paula just didn't work at some point. It would spend the credit, but would it install? Whoa, does nobody play Paulus so nobody realized that was an issue? You saw this combo on Dark Ray's deck post. It was not my idea. I'm pretty sure someone wrote a comment about it. Was it Stanyak talking? Oh, well, hey, this is it. But I think Stanyak pointed it out maybe on uh, the video. Hey, Elwin, how's it going? Just giving credit. You're so mean to Ampere. It literally does not have a plan. It doesn't have a plan. You're starting to be like, man, I sure hope that this draw is good. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Elwin. I'm hyped for Ampere, but I don't want it to be good because I want to be the king of Ampere and I don't want competition. Ampere is mad. I, I think there's a lot of people that Sanjay are going to enjoy Ampere as much as you. This is cool. This is really cool. So half run, Stavka Tithe, white space. Okay, we're running weird stuff. I feel like this deck from a distance looks like it's doing the Stavka half run thing at all costs. And probably doesn't have a win condition outside of it. But I think you can take that and insert into a more robust op deck. But like looking at this ice suite, I don't know. Like it's not even running border control. How are you not running border control? Can you explain this idea here? Yeah. Yes, I can. One second. I don't know if it's fun to just grab out channels mid run to say to a piece of ice, then host again. Okay. So the combo is right. Stop again. When the runner encounters it, you can trash a card. And if you trash a res card once per turn, you can go get op. So you can get something and res it and resolve all of its nonsense at instant speed, right? You also have Mavirus. So the idea is the runner runs into Stavka and they have a breaker. Uh, hopefully they're like, oh, I have a sentry breaker, right? And the idea is that you res the Stavka and then you trash a three coster. And then you use the three coster that's trashed at instant speed to go get the half run. And half run says as long as it's being resed during a run uh, against this server, so you install it on this server, you can pick a card and say the runner can't break anything with it. And so you say like, oh, here, your Begalter. And now then they encounter Stavka and they can't use their Begalter. And that's the idea. This is just what startup looks like. <laughs> this doesn't seem to have a win condition. Like a single mana arm, none of this ice is really taxing. I guess it's all about the Stavkas, right? Yeah, Batty at home is a way to talk about it. But like, I'm surprised that there's no border control in here. I, it's like by far the best op list or the best op card. Uh, you have Zato as well to just like throw um, Stavkas at the face. Uh, three ice walls is also like a lot, but I think that's maybe just a bit too much reliance on Zato. I feel like you probably don't want to do that. But again, these sort of like ratios are pretty easy to tune. Just be like, oh man, I wish I had more three costers. Oh, I wish I had more four costers. I just can't believe boarding control is not in here. Not even mouseless. In fact, there's like it, it goes from envelopment to what to anvil. There's just oh stop because of four. I guess yeah okay. No arc lockdown. Yeah, I do think you'd want arc lockdown. Like if you're okay. So if you're doing rig destruction as your win condition, uh, again, there's a lot of things you can do. I do think you definitely need to play arc lockdown. Yes, and on top of that, I think there's a small chance that you would also consider probably not, but you could probably consider scape net. I think arc lockdown is necessary. And I think that's actually not that bad. This is to influence. Arc Lockdown is to influence. Arc Lockdown is more important. But I think the best thing is that, and you don't do it too poorly if you're playing uh, Yakov in your deck, is that this is probably a good enough deck to play also a Gaslight. It's a startup deck, Andre. Okay, that makes sense. Deck's perfect then. But that also makes sense why it doesn't look like it's a win condition. That being said, that's why you don't have Gaslight and it's less necessary. There's no simul chip anymore in startup, so there's no reason to recur stuff. Okay, so, okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. Perfect deck. Um, but yeah, that's a consideration. If you want to bring this to standard, and I think you can, I think I lost where I was. I think I was up here. You want to do that. How would you build a deck around this combo or would you not consider it an ob? Uh, around what, Armando? About around this? You all have to be ob to do this, right? Gotta go feed the fam. Thanks so much for the stream, Andre. Hey, Brennan, cheers. 
enjoy the rest of the, the evening. Uh, yeah, evening, right? Yeah. I don't ever think I've seen a deck running scape net. And Litterbug, I don't think you will. I think in standard, there's a chance that if you're doing uh, rig destruction that you could consider trashing a simul chip. I really don't think you would. I, I I don't think this is a serious thing. I think this card was like niche playable when everyone was on turning wheel, which is like a really important virtual that you lost to. Um, but I think the big thing is now with access to cards like Gaslight, uh, some decks are actually a bit more reasonable at playing singletons of tech cards, like tech operations. So the idea is that like decks might start playing a bit more best defense to be able to deal with, I don't know, like a no free lunch if they're a tag based deck. And the fact is that they can draw it more consistently, uh, which kind of good. Yeah. What's the wincom glacier kill? I've been thinking about different packages. You're responding to Jester. I don't know what Jester said. I made on pair with all the nasty five threes and it seems pretty good. I think that's the one unpair that I haven't tried it, which is an unpair that runs uh, all the tricks and traps and is like trying to do as much damage and stuff like that. Just because one of the benefits of unpair by a mile is it's really hard to run into because every upgrade can be any upgrade. And that's way harder to deal with than just being like, I'm playing all the efficient ice and a bit of fast advance, which like, I don't know, you don't have to play around it. You can just do whatever you want. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, we talked about this. Link is going to be in the description, but we did a tier list. We're going to do the runner side on my channel. This is on Jeff's channel, Magic the Gathering, as of um, the near future. Should be next week. And the other thing I want to shout out, we'll just spend a second on this before we go back to building some decks and doing some game stuff. Let's just go through the pronunciation guide together. I think this is quite important. I have a standard arc lockdown ob. Its biggest issue is a bit slow to set up. Oh, I believe that. I do believe that. I also think if you're playing rig destruction in startup or maybe even in, 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 in standard, probably in standard and maybe in startup, is I do think, especially in OB, if you are playing this sort of thing, you almost definitely want to be playing um, uh, Kimberlite. Like Kimberlite and OB is really good and you just trash a program and that's it, right? Like if you hit a criminal's one of breaker by scoring out of Kimberlite field, you win the game. Uh, not that easily, but I do think that if you are on rig destruction, you would play Kimberlite field and startup. Unfortunately, you lost SDS during deployment, but I even think in standard, you could play SDS and Kimberlite and probably end up playing the outfit and then build a Zato rig destruction deck. But you definitely need like two arc lockdowns at a minimum. I think the harmonics bloop deck is probably better than half front Stavka. I don't think harmonics is really good. And I think bloop is hard to break and not so much a face check. Uh, cause everyone sees it coming, but I think it. Right now, people don't break, break bloop well, and that's the best part of bloop. There are people running one of breakers. Yeah, in criminal, it's pretty common. In shaper, it's pretty common, but they have simul chip. It's just everyone besides anarch. Scoring out three twos has worked great in startup, but I don't know the standard card pool will have to optimize a singleton list in that format. I don't understand how you score out three twos in standard. I think the biggest thing is in startup is that runners don't have economy, so they just can't run the remote server every turn. One X breakers plus tutors is the usual in standard. Yeah, in standard, out of every faction besides Anarch, Anarchs generally run at least two of their breakers because um, they don't have the consistency in filter draw. Uh, everyone runs one of breakers. And then they'll have like some redundancy. Like also they have Endurance or like also they have Amakua or like Botulus and Boomerang, but that's kind of how it goes. You're the only corp to get seven three twos? Yeah, for sure. But like, I don't know. I'm just surprised the runners are not running enough. Because that deck doesn't have economy. I don't know how you fast advance. I guess you just never advance, right? But then you just play PD with Seamless. Seems better, right? I don't know. I haven't played PD's rotation. Okay, real quick. Pronunciation guide. We'll do this once at the top so we can all correct each other and like play on JNet and play in person. Someone will say a name wrong and you'll be like, oh, actually, well, actually. So Katurga for Katurga Breakout. Abasu, that's not what you'd expect. That's pretty cool. Enga, we didn't know how to say that. That's great. Uh, Noom, great. Tiach... Sahya Banhar Gantulga. Gantulga. Uh, a lot of people say Bankar. Apparently Banhar. Great. Zenit. That's how you'd think it is. It's Zenit. This is a common thing as well when it comes to a lot of the Russian saying, uh, the Russian terms, the Russian names. Whenever there's like a, a, a Z-E, uh, a lot of times there's a Z sound into it, like Z-Y-E. So things like Azef is Azef protocol. Uh, what's her name up here? Uh, what's her name? Vera is like Viera. Like that sort of sound gets in there. But yeah, Zenit. Uh, Asmund Podlad is Ausmund Pula. Cool. Uh, Nanuk. Nice. And uh, Nakitut. Dr. Nuka Vraulik. Sick. Uh, this is the hardest one to say, I think, by a mile. Uh, Nova Inishiumia. That's the hardest one for me. I can say Slavic stuff. Matryoshka. Same sort of silent Y in there, but it is written out here at least. Uh, Thule is Thule. 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 We got it. Jupsta for Jupstead Grid. Jupsta. Hendrik is Hendrik. Uh, the characters are from Greenland. 
<laughs> Isuak, I think we all got that right. Dr. Vien Chien Keeling, Vien Chien Keeling is probably correct enough. Half run is half rune. Cool. Sounds more Norse, even though it's Icelandic, probably very different. Uh, Nana Civic is Nani Civic. So a lot of people want to say Nani because that's fun, but it's Nani Civic. Great. Uh, Viera is kind of difficult. Viera Ivanovan, uh, Ivanovna Shuskaya. Ivanovna. Great. Uh, Klevetnik, check. Unsmelling Sergeyevna, same idea that there's the R-Y-E that, sh that sneaks up in Russian. Uh, Vladisa Birsk, same thing in Vladisa Bursk grid from last season as Vladisa Beer. Beer is really easy to remember. Yakov, uh, Erikovic, Avdakov, Avdakov, yeah, great. Uh, Zato, this is, I don't think, actually worth anything because this is just spelling out the abbreviation. You wouldn't do that in Ampère, like French Ampère, which is great. Initiate plus you, me, ah. Whoa, Ellen, that actually helps a lot. Is that actually how you can do it? Initium? No, it's not initiate. It's initium mia. That's really hard. Dr. Diesel is good. All right. So is it the Nuka part of Nuka Cola Diesel Joker now? Honestly, I haven't thought about that like that. Kind of be funny, but I really doubt it. I don't know. I don't think so. I somehow didn't notice until now that White Blade Tribute card has Eric in the name of Yakov too. Yeah, I guess so. Because that's meant to be the, the mad character to some extent, right? Erikovich. Really great. Oh, there's some flavor stuff too. Rauslovitz is the concerto on concerto. Uh, Padma's Bister is, is Padma's name. Uh, Padma's name, excuse me. And then Valentina Ferreira, whose name we might see more. This character is Brazilian. We're going to see a bunch more Brazilian characters in a bit. IPA says Jupsta is Jupsta. Cody, how's it going? Jupsta. Okay, cool. Um, to this date, I also am not sure how to say um, Hakarl because I've listened to like Icelandic people say Hakarl and it sounds nothing like we thought it did. Huge shout outs. I think it has to go to um, uh, Ginevra for putting that stuff together, but I love pronunciation guides. Um, so big of a deal. But I just want to make it obvious that when I'm saying something strange that like, what are you saying? Why are you saying Ausmoon? Like, who's that? So it's clear to everyone. So at least now we're all on the same page. All right. Since it's a chestful, it's like Eric's son. Oh, actually. A chestful. Ocha is, uh, Ocha is like dad, right? Pronunciation guide needs to listen to someone say it right. Yo, no joke before Worlds, we did not know how to say Elevagao. So we asked around and then like folks from NSG got friends who could speak it to actually like record into their phone and send it to our way. And I think it's close to Elevagao instead of Elevagar, uh, which I think Hakao gets something like that as well. I reminded of those YouTube pronunciation videos. Man, it's so hard to trust YouTube pronunciation videos and I'm not sure if I like that fact. Not gonna lie, the pronunciation for Azief protocol threw me for a loop. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's more fun to say. Now we know how long in the future Netrunner set if the guy's Eric's son. Eric is quite young though. So it's gonna be a while. Assumed you all were adding letters because of reasons. I love that they do these guys as well, even though I'm so bad at accents and pronunciation. And that's the sort of thing like I I think I reckon if you pronounce pronounce a name wrong, like this is the weird thing too. It's like, if you just pronounce a name wrong and you pronounce it like an anglicized way, it's like, I doubt you're incorrect. It's probably not the right way to say it, but it like, I, I don't know. I know for, I, like if there was a Slovenian character and you said the Slovenian name wrong, I wouldn't be upset. It's hard to say Slovenian uh, for sure. Like as maybe a Canadian or a North American, like, I don't know. Maybe people feel differently and they want to, you know, make sure the language is said right. But if you say like Ampere, whatever, right? I don't know. Eric will get cybernetics and live for many, many years. Shout out to Eric. Okay, cool. What are we doing? Like, these are all my bad startup decks. Uh, I think we don't want to do that. Let's try Isawak because we never played Isawak and Isawak looks absolutely wild. My personal pet peeve is people making puns with their mispronounced names. Sanjay, like what? Give me an example. <laughs> no, but for real. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? I think Isawak is fixed on GNet, so we can try this thing out. I don't have high hopes for this thing. But it's probably better than I think. Like, I ran so far away. No one has ever said that. It's Iran, right? I ran. That's cruel. No, I just wanted to know what that meant. Yeah, I guess so. I, I guess that is, yeah, it's like doubling down on like a terrible sentence. And then also, you're doing it wrong. Misheard subtitles? Okay. This is Iswak. 
I don't know where to put my face. I think I'm going to put my face down here for a bit and we'll move it once we start getting the deck together. So the new Jinteki 45T, is it an economy card? No, it's not. Is that going to be a problem? Yeah. Uh, it says whenever you score an agenda that you did not install or advance this turn, you got to put a power counter on its identity. <laughs> for each hosted power counter, you need one fewer agendas to win the game or agenda point, excuse me, to win the game. So the idea is that if you do like install advance advance a 2-1, uh, at that point, next turn you score it out, it's like a 2-2. Did you take on some massive risk and not score it out right away? Sure, but maybe that's the point. And I think with Iswak, there's many ways to play the, the deck. Uh, you could play it as a trap-based deck where you just do install, advance, advance. The next turn you do advance, 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 and then either they don't run it, uh, and then you maybe score out uh, like a 5-4 agenda and maybe win in two agendas, or they do run it and they die to Urtica or something like that. We can all dream. Hey, Hedonism, how's it going? Daijin, will you try the Adam Happy Tree Janky deck? I'm not sure which one that is. Adam Tree deck is legit though. If it's just like an Adam deck with uh what's it called? With uh World Tree to like get the directives off the table, it's probably pretty good. I think World Tree is pretty good. How many Jumons do we put in? Uh oh, no, 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 no. Okay. So we're gonna try and build this as consistently as possible. That's what I want to see the challenge. Like if this can just replace mid-range Jinteki, and the idea is that using two cards, uh, we're gonna be playing. So we're going to be playing some amount. I'm just going to put all of them in of La Costa Grid. So very importantly, Iswak cares that the card that you're scoring out for extra pseudo points, it hasn't been advanced this turn. So cards like La Costa don't advance. In fact, almost 90% of cards don't advance cards, but they place advancements on cards. So the idea is that a La Costa Grid, if you just put an agenda in remote server and just kind of leave it for a bit, and then again, how does that work? Uh, you can potentially get massive points. So La Costa is really good. Now, the other one that's really good, and like you need another reason not to play it, uh, seamless launch and seamless launch places to advancements. So the idea is that you could take an Obakata, put it in a remote server and on top of La Costa, and then maybe the runner runs it and can't steal it. And then for some reason also doesn't trash La Costa. You can do like seamless, seamless, and then get out of five, four. And that's pretty good. What is the agenda suite? I'm not actually sure. You're probably playing hybrid release. I know people talk about pro playing project Kusanagi. And again, I don't know if this deck has enough economy to install advance events this to get no benefit. Uh, probably not, but, um, that's the idea behind this deck. Except success, I'm best of the rules. <laughs> 46 likes should be the next deck of the week. Okay, cool. I'm I'm I think World Tree is, is wild. I'm waiting for the Adam deck to get deck of the week before I post my op deck. <laughs> trick of light. I think trick of light also flip is like another way you can do it, but like this makes almost no sense. Uh because Jinteki inherently doesn't have anything that's really advanceable. Maybe if you're play, I like I think if you're playing trick of light, you're also pl probably playing a trap deck. But then what are you trick of lighting, right? Like you can trick of light a 2-1 to make it a 2-2, but the 2-1 can't be installed that turn, so it doesn't really matter. So the, you're basically trick of lighting things that are already been on the table. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's good enough to have another thing here, but then you need cards that you're advancing, which you don't have advanceable ice, so you're not splashing influence, let alone clicks advancing stuff. So I'd be like very surprised because I thought SWAC was only cards that you haven't advanced this turn, but it's cards you haven't installed nor advanced. So again, you can't just do two, one, and then trick, which would be sick. Um, that would be really good because it's not like seamless. Biovault's like a possibility. I don't know if we're hard enough Glacier. Maybe that's the thing is like, it's hard to evaluate this to know whether we're hard enough Glacier. It's just a space uh, to be able to like charge that. Lacosta is ashes, so we're in standard. Yeah, we're in standard right now. It's a standard chain. How's it going? Um, I think it's really hard probably to play this in startup. And I think in startup, you might have to lean more into traps just because you don't have Lacosta. So all you have access to is like trickle light and seamless launch, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and maybe that's okay. But you also lost like cerebral overwriter. So the traps are just kind of Urtica. And not that Urtica is bad. You also just don't have enough economy probably in startup, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Lucian would be so perfect for this ID. Brand, how's it going? Well, you can still play my uh, Regenesis. Mitosis. Mitosis. You can still play Mitosis if you really want to. And Mitosis is like not bad. Uh, it says you can ask score res cards for this turn, but the idea is if you Mitosis out like an NGO and then a 2-1 and then you don't run one of them, you probably have to be playing traps for this is good because they have to go into new remote servers. So it's not like you can get this on your Lacosta very easily. False flag, yeah. Gonna get some sleep and catch up with the bot. Hey, good luck, have fun. Thank you, bookkeeper. It's getting late. Get some sleep, huh? If you have a good enough glacier to score a 4-2 without advancing it, you could also score a 6-2. Oh, boy. There might be something with Vlad Grid in startup. Oh, that's cool. Vlad Grid's cool. Vlad Grid's also like 4 influence. Oh, the other Vlad Grid. Uh, the actual Glid Grid. Vlad Grid is like 4 influence. So that's very difficult. Um, so by the time you play your Vlad grids and your seamless launches, you're like struggling to play spin doctors. Um, whether or not you need the spin doctors, you probably do. If you're playing seamless, you need to get those back in. Are we scoring with three plus three plus one Iswak? Two plus two plus two? I have no idea what we're doing. 
I honestly have no idea how to start building this, and this is going to probably be very messy. And we're going to probably play playing a bunch of non-games for a while. Shipment from Sansen? Shipment from Sansen would be very, very good, but that's why we have this. It's better than Shipment from Sansen. Actually, this is better than Shipment from Sansen. By a mile, right? It's not a double. Get them back with Simulation. Rhino, we definitely can, and we'll play Simulation Reset because it's a good enough card, but, like, if your plan is... It's just, like, really, really slow. You'd rather have more ways to do it than just, like, ways to recur the single ways to do it, right? Uh, we're going to do standard right now, Timberling. We'll probably maybe do startup after. Tag deck fast events. I don't think we have a good reason to do that in Iswak. We'd probably just play NBN. Maybe if we're playing Iswak, they won't expect it. But like the amount of influence we could play to do that. And then we could just play, you know, NBN and actually have agendas that work with it, let alone more tag punishment. I think if you go to mid range glacier, you play two pointers and plan to trigger Iswak once. I think that's good enough, right? Like scoring a three two pointers. Or like, I think you play some amount of Obakadas because it's just good enough. And then you can win with Obakata into a two-pointer that's never advanced. You can win on two agendas. Or sometimes you can win on like three two-pointers and then one, or like, yeah, three two-pointers. Or you could do a two, a two and a four. I guess that gets you there. I think there's a couple of ways that you can score out, but like kind of difficult. The coast of rotating from startup makes this way way less excited for this ID in startup. Yo, you should try op out. If you don't play Jumon, I'm going to be disappointed. I'm going to understand it, but I'm going to be disappointed. So the idea with Jumon is that it's a 6-2. And I wouldn't play Jumon unless we're playing a real trap deck. And I'm trying to avoid that right now because I i don't really love trap decks so much, especially playing online. It's just kind of random uh, what happens. But with trap decks, this is really, really good. Because when your turn ends, you free advance uh, your cards that could be agendas or could be anything else. But I feel like if we're playing, you know, push into agenda, kind of rush a sort of pseudo mid-range glacier, like this is probably not where you want to go. Scoring an Obo unheard of? Oh, no, no, no. That's a good one. We do that. Are we in standard? We weren't in standard. Okay, so what are we playing? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Like off-offs? Okay. Uh, almost at a whole agenda suite there. We definitely play hybrid releases. It's all advanced events looks like an NGO front. Like it's a wild play. I don't know how good important this is. There's a chance this is actually not worth playing on the basis that uh, it does not help us score out. Right? Like if we score this as a two pointer, then we could score an Obakata and Offworld. Actually, maybe that's fine. Maybe that does open up some 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 possibilities. I just worry that this is not going to interact with our agenda suite favorably. Nisei Mark II is like a possibility. Uh, man, Blood in the Water, if we play enough other stuff, actually probably wouldn't be the worst. It's just like really hard to do Blood in the Water with Iswak because it stays. No, this is standard Cole because we can't do La Costa, but like we can't do Obakata either. And those are actually two of the best things that this ID can do. But we'll try Startup After if this like either works amazingly or doesn't work at all. I think those are two things we can try. Thank God. You get two counters in a turn if you had two on the field and two seamless in hand. Two hybrid release? Yeah, but how? Like... How? If we never advance them, what, are they just not going to run them in new remote servers? Regenesis? I don't know if I like Regenesis that much in this deck, right? Like, so Regenesis, there's a huge, it could be a five-pointer this on this thing, right? There's a, there's a massive technical ceiling here is if somehow you left this on a table and then you did like La Costa seamless and then you get the Obacata and this is like a five point combo like that feels really good. But I'm not sure how consistent it is, right? How do you feel about Prov Devos? I like Prov Devos a fair bit. I think Prov Devos is a bit slept on. I think it's really good. Trigger moon pull at the end of the run and turn to ditch agendas from hand. For sure, but then like we need multiple agendas in hand. We're not running a lot of agendas. We need the moon pool on the table, but then also this on the table if we want to fire our Iswak ability. So like, how do we do that? Like that's a deck that's probably playing horizontal playing traps. It's not this deck. And yeah, you can't even seamless this. That's a good point is you can't seamless this because then a card is entered archive. So it's really, really, really difficult. Yeah, it's convoluted, but like it's very doable in a different archetype. Like if we just play traps, yeah, we could do it. We could probably do it. But like, I don't know, we probably play Nisei's. I just, is that good enough? Maybe we drop, drop one hybrid release. Like, is this an agenda suite that makes any sense? I don't know. I honestly have no idea what to do with this walk. Uh, and also the play patterns are going to be like pretty, um, pretty uh, convoluted. You can big deal Regenesis. Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, you can Kakarenbo. And Kakarenbo is like probably fine. I just like, I will not play Kakarenbo. Drop an office for two more hybrid. I'll drop a Nisei for two more hybrid. Yeah, why not? Let's see how this plays. Yeah, it's fun. Does big deal work with this walk? No, because the, well, yes, but no. Uh, big deal. 
places advancements, so that's fine. But the problem is you can't install agenda big deal because Isawak wants you not to install. But if you have an agenda on the table that you installed last turn, yeah, big deal totally works. So yeah, Rashida and Geofront, very good in this deck. Install advanced events that we're going to do pretty consistently. Uh, of course, we want Spin Doctor because why not? Go all in the shell game. Jane, I don't really want to do that because I don't love trap decks like that on Jane Casual because it just kind of feels, you know, random and more than we're making like interesting plays. So we'll see. Eventually we will try it. But like it's one of my least favorite archetypes to play online. So I don't want to do it, I guess. <laughs> like you could play maybe Gene Splicer if this actually contributed to your win condition. Uh, we also just don't have enough money. Like that has to be said. We have not enough money in this deck and I do not know how to fix that. I just run three of cool. Uh, our ice is going to be in shambles. No longevity. Longevity is just probably not as good as any other four two. It's just probably not good enough. Maybe there's a chance that three twos are actually really playable in this deck because like Lacoste in a single seamless gets you there. Maybe. Why wouldn't we can confuse the hell out of people? But it's not confused. It's just like I rolled the dice. You know, trap decks feel so much better when you have to look your opponent in the eye. Yeah, Blake, you know how it is. Very hard to score out, but I will say that Jumon is just delightful in Glacier. Bluffing anything is anything is so satisfying. I do believe it. I think Sanjay, the highs for Jumon are like almost at the point where you can forget all the lows. Regolith for money is good. Um, I really don't like playing Hansei. Um, Regolith for money is good. It just kind of eats our remote server for a long time, and we want to be a bit jammy. Celebrity Gift is kind of way too slow, and also I hate showing my whole hand. I really detest showing my whole hand. Um, especially when we are in solid advancing advancing and they don't know we're not a trap deck. If you were the freak who wanted to play a shell game, what would you play? Oh, it'd be super simple. <laughs> Sophie tricks me into building a shell game deck. Like you just, okay, hold on. Y'all know this deck. How do we search Josh Quinlan? Search biotech. You just do this deck, right? Like this is what it is. Daily quest is going to take a remote server for way too long. Like, we want to be able to jam in remote server consistently. Vig on Lacosta is a funny way to get funds. Lacosta, Vig is so bad. Okay, you can find this. This is still probably on Twitch, on uh, Dodgepong's Twitch channel. But uh, it worked, though. I know. This is Josh on the left from the Toronto area playing against Abram Job, big boy, a very big competitive Netrunner player. And Josh here is playing this sort of deck, which is a biotech deck. If you want to know what biotech is, look at this board state when the, when the gift flips. You see on Josh's side on the left, I step central series and then just two cards on remote servers that have either three to five advancements on them. That's it. That's the whole game is. And that's all you have to do. I was watching here. I'm not on camera here, but when they're playing on lower tables, I was there and it was just like ridiculously fun to watch. But in the short of long is Jinteki Biotech was a flip ID that you could spend your whole turn to flip your ID over. And then all you could pick which back of the ID you played before the game started. There was actually three different IDs. Each had the same front, but the different back. And the back that got played in this was called the brewery. This is when you flip this ID, do two net damage. And the idea was, is that all that Josh was doing here is then solve advance, advance, cerebral override around the table. And that was it. And then if you didn't run it, he does advance, advance, advance. And then if you run the Cerebral Overrider, you'll take five core damage, which means uh, at any point then if over Biotech flipped, you take two net damage and you die. But also on the table were these five, three agendas. Install advance, 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 advance. And the whole game became that. Run the right thing or run the wrong thing. And mind you, at that point, Expose was not very common. And the biggest thing is that you had this card, which is basically just Iswak. Clones are not people. It was a current and it's currently banned right now. And it just said, when you score an agenda, add clones are not people to score areas and agenda worth one point. So at any point in the game, if you left two cards on the table with five advancements, or even I think three advancements and one and five, you could do advance, advance, play clone, score, score. You hit seven. And you can just do that with Iswak. You can play this deck in Iswak. Uh, you have to try to not lose on centrals. That is a big problem, but that's all you do. You do three Urtica Ciphers instead of this. You do three Cerebral, Cerebral Overrider. You'd probably play Seamless Launch. Um, and that's the whole deck. Cat, I'm doing well. How are you? The iconic glasses push downs. Yeah. Then score with clones, eight dudes. Yeah. And that's, you can do this with Iswak again. And I, I think that's probably a very good Iswak deck. Is it even better than playing personal evolution that can, if you don't run the right thing, clearing house you, and this deck could probably also play clearing house. I honestly don't know. I do think sometimes flatlining is in some ways harder than scoring out specifically if people are running, like, uh, I don't know if Caldera is seeing any sort of play here, but like people are still running a stone ship chart room. Yeah, that's the idea. That's what I build. So you can actually build it. It's probably not that hard. Current that's currently banned is line. Oh, that's all of them, man. 
sounds like a lot of fun. It's like really fun to watch. And like, I can't believe Josh was playing at top tables playing this. And then to see like all these players, like they sort of tilt, like they're players that are there that play the game about efficiency and like click compression, all that sort of thing. It's just being like, which one do I run? Right. And that's like the whole game. And it's so much more fun in person, especially when it's worlds, right? Like it's so stressed. There's an audience. It's people are like absolutely losing their mind when, when Josh scores out to seven. I'm dehydrated. Y'all drinking enough water? Okay. So jamming in remote server. Don't know how to do it. An issue we're going to run into also is our economy uh, and our ice. Uh, our ice is a bit tricky. We can spend some influence. I don't have the nerve for ambush decks. It's a skill too, because you also have to play quickly. There's a lot of situations where just spending too much time thinking about your turn makes it obvious that things are or not an agenda. Sometimes you can use it to your, your advantage, but like very commonly, uh, I will like spend too long thinking about a turn and then install a remote server. And then like, maybe that's a tell. So dreaming of an Iswak shell game deck with no traps where I might toast is two hybrid release is never going to happen. Gwen, it'll happen. You're going to play against someone on JNet who's scared of running into install advanced advanced stuff, right? Let alone my toast is advanced one of them, right? You can over advance a, what's it called? A hybrid release. It'll be fun. Okay, problem is we do not have ice that supports this. We don't have any uh, aggressively costed mid-range ice. That's kind of an issue with Jinteki. They just don't exist. So we have to figure out what to play for the ice suite. I honestly don't know. I think NA traps are easy to play because you can just install three cards and call it a day. I think that's true, Shisho, but I think non-advanced traps have a ceiling. Like, that's a big difference. I can run a snare, and you can pay four credits, and then that's that, and it won't win you the game. But if I run a cerebral overrider, it'll win you the game. So that's the thing is that Jinteki installs three things without advancements on it. I'm going to try and run two of them every time. But as soon as they do like Mitosis Advance at that point, like then I'm actually going to consider like, oh, I don't know if I can run that because I'll lose the game on the spot. Like I think there's a huge difference between advanced and non-advanced traps. Like, oh, cool. It's an Urtica. I took two net damage. Like I, that doesn't matter. But winning the game matters, right? Otoroshi Anemone is an ice suite. Kat, if we were playing the, um, honestly, Otoroshi is good here, but only if we're playing the trap variant, which I wish we weren't. No mid-range ice, vamp right there. Okay, spend seven. We'll play it, Jeff. We will play it. I know you like this one a bit more than I do, but we'll, we'll try it, obviously. I've definitely lost games after doing four core damage. For sure, for sure. But I think that's why Biotech was really sick, because then you could flip uh, and then do two net damage and win. Sophie, did you make Andre play shell game? <laughs> <laughs> AD, no, 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 we're not. We're, we're committing to our thing. Uh, we'll play Thimble Rig because hopefully Anarch struggle with it. Cat was shouting out Odoroshi, and Odoroshi is a really good ice suite that not a lot of people break this well, but the thing is, like, you need advanceable traps. They have to be scared of your stuff for this, and maybe they could. Yeah, Cat, we're not doing any traps. We're just trying to do, like, mid-range rush and try and score out with two, maybe two agendas. I don't know how realistic that is. We'll sign. Yeah, we're going to have to import a lot of ice. I think that's very accurate, and I honestly don't know where we start. Drafter? I'd be surprised if Drafter is the one we want. We don't really have that many reinstallables. We don't have that much recursion. Spiders is probably a bit too expensive. Maybe we can run like one or two. Yeah, that's probably fine. Data Loop seems good with three ob oboe. It is good, but it's also incredibly expensive. And we are not capitalizing on this one condition that often, right? Like it's not so much to protect the oboe. That would actually be pretty good. I don't know. I'm not the fastest to play. It's like really, really expensive to run that thing that has no face check. Well, it has a minor face check. Nani plus rig shoot. Uh, we have to keep it a bit more focused. Like as soon as we do this and then also do Nani rig shoot, like we probably could just play Agonfusion and do it better. There's an implication that he could play shell game if he wanted to, but could he set up a good shell game? Okay. You're, you're baiting me, Sophie, and I can, I appreciate that, but I'm just going to keep on trucking on. Uh, ah, Faction staple. What else we got? Afrin. I don't like it, but we'll try it, right? Border control should be a start brand. Yeah, I, the thing is, our influence is gone, right? Like three seamless, three spin doctor. We can play two border control. We play no magnets. We literally don't have barriers. We have multi, which is great. Is there some combo with Arella? Uh, no, because Arella c installs cards. If the cards install this turn, you can't iswalk it. So anything that installs a card, unfortunately not. You have to install your agendas, it turns out. Biovault, we're trying to keep him out of the remote. Yeah, we'll play Biovault for sure. If we get free advances on Biovault, it's good. Uh, we have bad ice. Favorite corp card is Winchester entirely because when I first saw it, I said out loud, that's not a gun. <laughs> that's not a gun. That's a spider. Uh, I always thought this thing be a scorpion. It's an arachnid, right? Palisade? Have, that's how far we've fallen? Is Palisade just good enough? It keeps those keelings safe, doesn't it? 
Void seems good. Void seems good. But then you realize you're playing Hansei Review and then you can't afford anything. Like maybe you play a Void or two? Doesn't that do something? Oh, Birth, yeah, but it makes you forfeit an agenda. So it kind of doesn't do much. This is terrible. We have 15 ice. We have 13 ice. Is Vamp really better than DNA Tracker? I don't know, but I'm going to test it. The re Enigma should be in this list. The reason why Vampire Inessa is practically good, uh, potentially good, is that you can sometimes res it for five credits. And that's a huge deal, uh, getting this for five credits. That's really, really quite good. And we don't care so much about the net damage. Uh, eh, it's comparable. It's definitely comparable, but resing this for five instead of eight kind of feels good. But I don't know. We just haven't played it yet. Oh, this is so bad. She sets up the next slow roll. She does, but like, yeah, I guess she does. Really need to call it Vampy. I keep thinking of the runner card. Yeah, everyone's saying Vamp in chat. I'm like, oh, that's a card. Yes, right. Four subs is a bit yikes. Yeah, DNA tracker's three subs. Anything more than two subs is a bit yikes. But yeah, no, it's not bad. Like, it, it seems okay. I just, it's very comparable modernly to this card, which is what people are calling out. No good ice and poor pop up window. No downside. <laughs> Honestly, I'd, I'd kind of consider it. It's not the worst. Uh, I do think we just need like enigmas. Like, we just need some sort of mid range uh, end the run on every single ice slot. Maybe one thimble rig is too many. This sure is a deck. Stoppable. I'm going to play this and I'm going to hate it and I'm going to not touch Isawak for a while. Like, this is the issues. We have to get this right the first time through. Otherwise, it's going to like absolutely taint my uh, expectation of the ID for the next forever. Slow rolling agenda with Isawak is good. I think it is good. Uh, it's pseudo good. Okay, let's say this is our opening hand. We would probably. What do you do? You uh, install half run, install off world office, click for credit, next turn, do nothing? Like, how? How do you play Jinteki? Is this only startup legal? Did they. Did they. Is this only meant to be a startup card and then they accidentally hit the wrong filter in standard on Netrunner DB? Where's the money? Jane, I don't know. There's no money in Jindeki. I think Hansei is bad. You and me both. You and me both think Hansei is bad. Those are some su real pseudo good draws. <laughs> this is the pseudo good deck. Uh, it's like kind of, like that's fine. We can play this hand. This is a hand. Is Ivic any better than Palisade with all your code gates? All our code gates. So let's talk about our code gates, right? So we have five code gates. How many code gates do you expect to have rezzed on the table by turn six? We'd be lucky if it was three, right? So then Ivic is a uh, four strength. That's actually not bad. I just think we're going to open with this. We have seven code gates. I know we have seven code gates, but we're not going to draw. Oh, we have seven code gates. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why not? We never played Ivic. Regolith, d, d, d I think Regolith is, was suggested, but the problem is I think is that we need to be really aggressive into the remote server. Awesome, by turn three. And so like this kind of eats the remote server. At least it lets me do that and I feel good about that. Man, Regolith is just keeping afloat all my bad Cortex. Like, well, at least I can click this for a long time. Bladderward is def a commitment to being poor. To be honest, Rego on the remote on turn cycle seems better than Hunt's review. It kind of does. Man, who who lets people have bladder words? This hand is so cool because you know what you straight up do with this hand? You do install advance events in a remote server. That is a playable hand only because you can install advance events. Now, of course, we're going to play against someone who's watching this right now. And if that's the case, we're going to do this and we're going to add three and we're going to play 54 cards. And then I'm going to slowly remove them when we open Jaina. Okay. Uh, Isawak test V1. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, uh, hybrids are unhappy. Okay, let's go. Where's your regolith? No, we got him. We got two. We got him. Yeah, I don't know. Expectations are low. I do think the trap deck is like a much more direct route to probably winning some games. I feel like trying to play honest netrunner with a slightly like, oh, if we can score agendas, it'll be slightly unfair. Yeah, it's not going to work. Hi, Brits. Hi, Birds. Huh. Are unhappy. 
Such a man slowly loses his mind. Uh, Isoak, let's go. Expectations are massively low, and I'm going to keep that in mind, right? Like, we're on this together. If if you tune out now because you're like, oh, the next 45 minutes is going to be an absolute. If you tune out now because you think the next 45 minutes are going to be absolutely miserable, look, we are the meta that we built together, okay? We're, we're doing the testing. It's like how playing Anemone is great because sometimes Oppo installs two Cybernetics and face checks into with two cards left. Is he? Who's Oppo in that? This is hype. This is a smurf. We are playing into a competitive Netrunner smurf. Playing 419. Okay, you know what you were doing. Thanks, you too. We have a competitive opponent. Thank you. We have a competitive Netrunner smurf. I have some ideas who this is already. Uh, playing a competitive 419 Endurance deck uh, into us. Going to... Oh man, we actually did play Bathonomous on un ironically. Uh man. Kevin, how's it going? How embarrassed were you by Pahalian? I found it very funny. <laughs> Huge shout out on the launch of the store. I think it's really cool. I don't think we shouted that out enough. The fact that you can buy directly from the nice folks at NSG. Just joining, what is this corp deck? Kevin. Oh, thank God you're here. Because you, maybe you can answer it. What is this corp deck? It's Iswak. So that means we don't know. Uh, we're trying to Lacosta and seamless launch out some amount of agendas. 490 is a Smurf. Yeah, well, yeah, they have no name. Of course they're a Smurf. You don't do that on accident. Do we get... Diversion, maybe. At least we have a half run. At least we have... Oh, this is really bad into Amakua. At least we can move it. We just can't afford, like, anything. How do we know 419 is a smurf? Uh, because they have no name. That's generally not a thing people do. Unless you're, like, trying to build, like, a, a, a game name that's hard to track. I, I know some some competitive players, and they have their no-name uh, IDs or their no-name IDs. And I know who some of them are. A lot of people tell me after, like, hey, I smurfed into you. Trash a card from HQ? Heavens no. Half run, let's go. They did know that we had an asset in server one. That could be an agenda. Right? Right? Bahelian is the way I'm referring <laughs> to it from now on. It's like so funny, you know, obviously the amount of time that goes into this sort of stuff and then it's like so easy to make, you know, like a, a simple goof like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's honestly, obviously like a really big deal. I worry so often that just like thumbnails and stuff have very common misspellings in them or very basic misspellings. Wait, I'm not sure what you mean. That's why they aren't a smurf? I think I might have missed something. Okay, we establish economy. I think here we might just click for a credit because I want to avoid double installing. And the next turn we can install advance advance uh, the hybrid. The problem is if we don't have a coaster, we don't have a seamless like We don't really have a play. Uh, we can consider icing here, but like I don't want to pay the tax. Yeah, we did get money there. That was actually kind of nice, right? Earthrise. Deuces, thimble rig exposed on HQ, so they know Amaku gets through there. At first, I thought that they were that they were smurfing because they said they wanted to access server one, but then they said it's an asset, so I believe they're real. Or did they say something? I still think I'm lost. D, I'm so sorry. All right, so they know it's a thimble rig here, which means they know boomerang, they know Amakua. Class act. Yo, class act rotated from startup. What a time to be alive. This joke is failing miserably. It's <laughs> D, I feel like that's to some extent on me, so apologize. So the issue here is like ideally you want to stack a two ice server with two different kinds of ice types. Like a code gate into a barrier would be really good because it forces them to have, you know, a breaker. But unfortunately, we have a code gate barrier into a code gate, which is like kind of the worst of both worlds, isn't it? Like now this card is just just kind of bad. We're going to have some Mamakua issues. This is so bad once they install a, what's it called? Like, we probably just put this on archives or bust. Now, the bad thing also about hybrid release, it's only a face down card. 
So it's not like we're going to get a Rashida back or anything like that. Again, Kakarembo, probably a legitimately playable card. Or we also could like simulation reset. Oh, yeah. Then now it's kind of over, right? Like we have literally we max out a three star. <laughs> Keeps them from using Bone and Boomerang easy, though. This it does, but like the window is so small. It's a Bathonymous on HQ, so they're going to hit Athonymous. Like the game's over, y'all. The game is like straight up over before it started. Like they have an Amakua. We did not or can't ice everything up. We have way too bad low strength ice. And they are already at two strength. Oh, sick. That's cool. I wonder if they're going to reprise us. Yeah, criminals are playing this now. It's actually quite good. Okay, they're on game point. And we'll get a hybrid release. That's kind of cool, I guess. So they saw four cards and stole two of them. So they saw this and didn't trash it. And they saw the next card. Half run is good, just needs to have an ice before it, so the runner already spent money in after it, so does anything at all? Good card? Well, no, I really don't think so. I really do not think so. The window for this to be good, and then if they have two breakers, it doesn't really do anything. I think the best case is that you have this in front of something, and then you blank like their killer. Like, the best thing to blank for this is something they need later in the run. Not for this itself, because there's two ways you can get through this. I don't want a simulation reset this hand. Like, draw... And puts a new card on top of R&D. We don't want to do that. So I think we just install this, pay a credit. But like, this is obviously terrible. The window of half run to be good is immediately after you read Stavka and Av. <laughs> yes, yeah. Right, like imagine we had this on the outermost, right? They run into it. We res the half run. We have to discard a card and then they just come back. Now, if it's behind this, they run through Enigma, pay two. Then we res this, discard a card and then they just run back, right? Like there's... Halfrun is good in Ag, Nani, Dex, that, that's about it. Yes, I think it's really good in Ag Infusion, but like in Ag Infusion, anything is good because you can just trash it in the run. This is going to get pinholed. I think Halfrun being two cost wall static with late game potential position as a suited border, but it's so much worse than a late cost wall static because they can break it with two kinds of breakers, right? Like it's, if you want to rush out and be aggressive, now again, they have two ways they can contest this. Like find your Black Orchestra comeback or find their Paperclip comeback. Like that's a massive liability. I'm not sure why you prevent. Uh, yeah, you're right. We shouldn't have prevented there. Amaku is free range and they know what that was. Yeah, we should not have prevented. I was autopiling. Oh, they actually trashed the Spin Doctor. So there was an unknown card on top of R&D. So they saw three, excuse me. And they have a paperclip down too. I tried found myself trying to fast forward past this game you know you and me both you and me both like even if we like i don't know how we win rnd is wide open into an amakua and we have no ice that deals with this besides the nazi which again if we afford that we have no more money ever Ooh, ooh, ooh! we could get a good old tutu again they might be more scared of this because of a nazi but like we don't have a play just purge lol yeah, they get a virus token, Kevin, but like that's the way I think IY at knee jerk did it. But like with this situation open, I don't think it matters. The problem here is they can get to five and run server one. That's not good for us. Oh, cool. It'll be over soon. Probably this turn if they really put their mind to it. Oh, cool. Good game. Thanks for the game. Uh, how many cards did they access? Admittedly, we didn't, we, like, what could we ice R&D with? Like, all of this is, this kind of sums up what I think of Isawak. It doesn't do anything massively unfair. And again, they saw nine and they got four agendas. That's pretty wild. Uh, that's actually pretty, pretty wild. Uh, but when it comes to like what we could do that actually would be unfair, I think we'd have to do traps. And if we play traps, the deck, they have to play differently. And I think, yeah, okay, well, you win, Sophie. We're going to play traps today. And I think largely because of how that went. But like, we're not doing anything unfair. Our, our, our ability only fires if we're winning. <laughs> we have to win to do that. Ah, That was bad luck as well. Yeah, that wasn't good. It was not good. We drew a good economy start. Okay, uh, deep dive is a problem. Uh, this hand's mm, honestly maybe okay. Best of luck, have fun. Is just throwing two ones at people a valid strat for Isawak? No, 
because you will financially never recover from that and you only have three two ones. So I think it has to be a bit more nuanced than that, but uh, you just throw four twos and five threes. Okay, opening out, let's talk about this. Sable, 50 cards, okay, sus. Um, HQ, we could get an Anansi on it, but we can't protect it. We have a Lacosta, which is sick. We have an Anoetic, which is useless. And we have an Inju. We're going to mulligan this. I think I'd rather play the pair that game. Yes, I think I would have as well. Because, But that's that's a cool thing if you play on pair is you probably have a better Ice Suite than Jinteki. Only way I see ID firing is traps. Uh, I think it's the easiest way, Jane. I don't think it's the only way, but I think it's probably the easiest way. Okay, so let's just not... Ooh, let's get a Vampire Nose to the fire. That'd be sick. So we need to ice up everything. We are running a Palisade in our deck. A half run on centrals. Who are what is on pair and why do we hate it? Them? Uh, it's the new corp. It's neutral. It's, I don't like it. It's very bad. Like, what ice do we put on HQ? This is all... This is such a salad. Like, what's a remote ice? It's probably Palisade, but then the border control it. So I'm going to ice up Vampire Nose on HQ. Uh, we want to stop like the cheeky, hopefully that Sable draws a bad mark. Unfortunately, we're one credit short of resing this thing and resing this thing early would not be great because we'd go down to two. Archives of the mark. Twinning early, so we're going to see some coffee for sure. That's probably a bit of a very aggressive install. They're a French prosthesis company, prosthesis company. Um, Aaron Wright uh, wrote a really good story about it. I like it. Yeah, it's a Commander Corp, exactly. There's the chest. Now, this is a bit ugly, right? Because if you're going to tie your whole package up to running, it's kind of hard to do that when you only have one credit, no breakers. Oh, actually straight up faction staple here because we've successfully on turn one with relatively decent ice, iced out Sable, right? But the is this guy's the turtle. We're set. We have a liability, which is the uh, thimble rig. We'll talk about that in a minute. But otherwise, like doing the thing. Do we have no economy? Yeah, that's correct. We don't have any of it. So if we do this new remote, we have to credit credit because we have to be able to afford to res it, which would be a nightmare because it's a half run uh, to keep the Amaku out. Because in theory, Case can charge here. But like going down to zero credits and hoping a Chesba Amaku is going to get you in is really difficult. So now if we just play conservatively and make sure we can res everything, we actually can keep the Amaku out. Do we have a Thimble Rig here? Yeah, we do. Boosh, boosh. Let's go. That doesn't seem that bad. People play Magic, right? Magic is different than Netrunner. Oh. oh, yes. This is actually better than DNA Tracker, but only because they don't have money. Draw how many cards? Some. We might regret that. We probably regret that. We hit an inside job, though. That's cool. Anoetic? Probably trash that, which means you get no turtle counters. That's kind of a win. I don't like anything that requires taking from HQ, especially with Sabotage. Hey, Rebecca, in reference to what? Trashing from HQ? Like Regenesis? Because I'm with you on that. Info Bounty too. It's going to be hard to get value from that. Uh, Forest Strength here actually makes it a lot easier to deal with this with um, Cat's Cradle than the other thing. The other thing being uh, DNA Tracker. But like one of eventually, everything actually seems interesting to deck build. So Stab, I think that you run into two things. Firstly, you realize that as a corp deck, you need to run enough economy in your deck to have a chance and your options are limited. So on that basis, a lot of the decks start to look the same. You also generally run all the best dice. Also, because it's hard to specialize in anything, you generally have to be a bit of a generalist deck and that doesn't exactly help you. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, but the biggest issue is like corpse inherently need to have a very focused win condition to do something unfair to win the game. Just playing like average, like just some ice, some money, and then some good enough agendas generally doesn't win Netrunner games uh, as opposed to runners where I think it can. So like just not having an ability is actually like a huge drawback. All right, this takes, can we score this out next turn? We do install, install, and then it gets one. No, we have to slow roll it. Could just slow roll the hybrid though. Yeah, I think they're harder for them to steal this at this point in the game because they probably have breakers in hand. How's the Iswak deck going? Oh, cat. Uh, okay, so far this game's fine. We played a bad one, but it was over fast. So not a big enough card pool for it to actually work. It's not only not a big card pool, there's like not enough tutoring, uh, but like it's just hard to have a focused win condition. It's all advanced hybrid. I think we can just slow roll the heck out of this Obokata and then try and win off of a 4-2. Like, scoring this from hand is a very reasonable play. 
but like they have they went all in on hitting central servers went really poor in economy while we locked everything out now installing a bio vault install advanced events bio vault is like not the worst thing to do it's a bit expensive and our money is kind of falling apart i think we might just install advanced in the ngo front naked like we just need enough money it's just really hard here because we want to advance the obacata but we also want to get the bio vault Triple advance the Obra for the four next turn. We're going to get there anyways. I think we can even double advance to be able to, uh, to be able to seamless it, but I don't think we're in a rush. Maybe we should be, maybe you're right. Awesome. Like, I think I'm, uh, I saw awesome saying I said awesome, but like, you're right. Maybe we want to close the game out more aggressively. I'm trying to be, play a bit slow. Archives is the mark here with the tunnel vision. So now we have to watch out because they do vampire Anessa for, uh, six credits. Shout out to whoever said I said I should do that. Just closed 50 tabs, accidentally crashed my browser, updated my browser against my will, and miraculously have all my tabs restored to come back to this. It's going okay. Dogs are here. So here, we can install Advanced Advanced the Bio Vault. Next turn, we can seamless launch this out, so we're in no rush. Honestly, I don't know what to do here. I feel like the play pattern is actually like drastically different than what I'm used to. That I think it actually, yeah, getting this out of the remote server quickly was probably the right play. Now, what can they do? They can get into HQ. So I think I'm just going to install advanced advanced this. So if there's a diversion or something, we can actually like stop them in the tracks and then we can still score at the oboe if we need to. Think about this, Tabby. The one of limitation does not apply to basic lands and commanders. So econ in the form of men is reasonably consistent. Never has no such restrictions. That's a really cool way of thinking about it. I think the bio play works. I think we're going to force them to spend here. Now the axis is like not that bad. They'll still get the money if the run ends, but this is kind of expensive, right? Like it's two to, uh, to boost. And then there's four more subroutines, which is going to be four credits if they want to break it. Now they can give us some of these subroutines, right? One of them, they should break regardless because they lose two credits. They've already boosted. So it seems like they will. The two unit damage is obviously like, Something you probably want to avoid. You may draw one or two cards. Fire all. Yeah. So we gained money. Sick. I think I can draw one card. And then here, I think we can let the access in, right? Like Amaku at one doesn't change anything. And then we still have a bio vault. Just don't hit our two one. Even if they hit our two one, I don't think it matters. Oh shit. And they get an info bounty. Yeah, actually, that was probably worth biovaulting. I can't believe they stole that. <laughs> All right, this is fine, though. Like, now this is a really expensive run. So just to play this. This is okay. Like, this is super expensive. Right? Like, this is not actually credit positive. Like, you're spending five credits to go through this ice. We're still getting benefit from it. And then you take five away. Like, it doesn't do much for the game. I feel like there's a lot of times people diversion for funds that is not a good time to die vault. Bio vault this, I honestly probably, but not necessarily. Like, yeah, yeah. Still quite bad for them. But like, I don't think that was a great bio vault. Us going down to 17 wasn't a big deal. And they spent four or five to make that run, right? Oh man, they made us draw. This is actually really cool. High five, Sophie. You're clearly a fellow enjoyed watching Andre suffer. Yo, it's okay. I'm going to be here Thursday. We got to play the deck list of the week. I'm used to this sort of thing. Yeah, denying them five credits was good on their economy. I wonder if we draw here, actually. We got good money. So they're going to access, they're getting wake count and plan counters. That actually does matter. We'll be on seven next turn. We don't have to score out the Obacata. So maybe we can just draw two. Yeah, we'll draw two. Yeah, that's, that worked out fine. What the f What's happening? How are they doing it? Tunnel Vision is aptly named. Yeah, it's something that can happen. Um, so I don't think we're in any, like, we don't really have to score out the Obacata anytime soon. Their Amaku is still on zero. Like, this is slowly working away. Now, if we had an agenda to jam... <laughs> Uh, we'd be able to potentially win next turn. Like if they didn't steal the off world, we seamless this. It's a five three. Uh, sorry, it's a five four, and then this would be a four three next turn. If they missed the off world office, we probably would have won. And this is also shows you where half run is like uh, it's not the worst. It's not great though. Yeah, it's okay. Hey James, how's it going? 
This is the one that we're worried about, but I think we're going to do the half run on HQ because again, it is just annoying enough. We'll put this on R&D because we could lose on R&D. And how much we have three, four, five plus eight plus two. Yeah, whatever. One and five and one and seven. It was technically a two and seven, right? Because they multi accessed Spin to dig for an agenda. We're not exactly in a rush because as soon as we spin to dig for an agenda, we can't seamless and install it. Oh, actually, we could have. We could have. Yeah, maybe it was right. This is going to feel bad for them. It's an Anansi. Tunnel Vision breaks that for 300 credits. You break it for eight. I'm not a big Tunnel Vision fan for what it's worth. Oh, they used twinning on that too? Oh, they saw three. Okay, I don't feel that bad about it. It was just because they stole it on the first one. It feels worse. I didn't realize they, they twinning it. Oh, it's an overclock. Okay, so on no money. Do they continue on literally no money? Funny enough, the Thimble Rig would have just kept them out. But yeah, that's their money gone. The Bathonomous secretly doing sick stuff out here in archives. Okay. Unfortunately, we're at the point where Steamless launch doesn't feel great to score out the Avocado. Uh, they're on zero. Whatever. Come at me. We are Glacier Titan. I will slow roll the heck out of this. I got good ice on all servers. Archives is the mark. Surprised they didn't run. Okay, we did it. We officially paid no credits for Nobukata, and that makes us winners. Cool thing here is we can use the half run and actually discard a card. So this will put us on... Okay, we're at four. So it says three here, but we're three of F6. That's going to confuse me. Um, so this will put us on four of five, which in no way really matters. So we'll start with the Spin Doctor. Because if we draw a better agenda, we jam the better agenda. We did not draw the better agenda. That's kind of on us. Well, we might as well. So Palisade Hafrin. I haven't seen a boomerang yet. We have the bio vault. Got to remember we have a bio vault. And I'm more worried about R&D, funny enough. Like Hafrin's vamp roof seems pretty hard. Do we worry about sneak door? This is over. Oh, commitment. Hey, Game Grub. Hey, MG. I'm only just revisiting Netrunner for the first time in a while. How's Parhelion? It's a good question. Parhelion's been out for uh, less than a week. So I don't have physical cards yet. We put in our order this week and I've played online with about half the cards. Parhelion flavorfully is a fantastic set. Uh, mechanically, some very interesting stuff. If you're playing startup, it's, there's a big rotation in there too, uh, but Corpse have some really strong win conditions and there's some very like powerful and impactful cards. And I think that's super appreciated on startup. And in standard, there's a lot of support for just about everything and it's really quite fun. This game seems like it's going a bit better. Yeah, seems so. Are those hybrids worth it? Not exactly. Um, we can always over install it, but like we might as well get it for free. Oh man, the half run's gonna hit the boomerang. No, we have run the Vampirinosa. So then they're in a uh, bad state. I'm kidding. They just click and run back. We want to double vamp or no HQ. Overdraw? Uh, we could have overdrawn. I guess so. But like if we rest the half run, we can just get the vamp or no in the bin and then score out the hybrid release. Even if we score out the hybrid release as a 2-1 and we actually pay credit for it, like it's totally fine. Res half run. Crash a card from HQ to prevent subroutines. Yeah. Choose a card. You can't boomerang it. That's equally relevant as if we said you can't tunnel vision it because then they would just not break it. Oh, I'm kidding. This one's better. They're probably letting this fire, honestly. It looks interesting. I'm a sucker for HB brain damage. Yeah, the core damage HB stuff is like very flavorful and very cool. Notice how they broke this with another means. But maybe that was us. Are they just letting this fire? I'm cool with that. Fire all? I will. How many cards? No. Thank you. Seamless, seamless info. Cool. Full fire? Wow. Yeah, no, they're just, they don't have a way to break this cheaply. Dawkins Pass coming down after. We have to watch out for R&D because they can see a lot of cards R&D with twinning wake up. So we do need to respect that. All right. Buy a vault's loaded. We can always buy a vault when they run R&D, um, especially because Anansi is hard to deal with. 
Yeah, I'm not sure that we have to advance this out. Bad twinning there. Uh, did they twinning on HQ? Did they overspend? <laughs> Vampy has now gained us more than it cost to res. Yo, imagine we top deck an Ivic now, right? I'm really worried about R&D here. We can draw once because we can jam the remote server. We can draw once because we, oh, we can't really jam the remote server anymore. So I think we just hold tight. I wonder if this thimble rig is good. If you don't draw, there's no way you have agendas. Yes. Now, that's the idea. We didn't want to draw the Vampire Nessa so they couldn't flush HQ. Right? Like if we did that and drew into agendas, it would have been really quite bad. Do we win? Did we win? Did we did we win? Did we do it? Do we believe in ourselves? All right, win on five. Let's go. Good game. And we were worried about econ. Yeah, that was a different game, right? If we had that sort of setup against four one nine, we'd been better. Like we did get our good eyes. Hey, cheers, you too. Oh, they're gone. That that ability technically mattered. But let's be honest. If we were just playing a other Jinteki ability, we wouldn't have slow rolled them and we would have scored out. And we probably would have got there faster because we won would have scored the off-world office. So did this ability actually cause us to win the game? Or if we had any other ability, would we have been more comfortable? I'm pretty sure if we had any other ability, we would have been more comfortable there. Good ice hovers over half. <laughs> you also saw how awkward the half runs were. Like it is not better than a lot of stuff that exists, right? Like its ability is not, it's maybe if you're playing none of civic grid, like maybe you have something there, but uh, oh boy. Yeah, so I guess we don't have to play traps, huh? Just kidding, we're back. Keep going. Yeah, now our opponent, they did, I think, overextend in the early game and they were on a run-based package and we shut that down. And that like does happen with run-based packages. And I do think you need to spend some amount of slots in your deck in a run-based deck to play like, liberated accounts or telework or something that you can get paid off by setting back because sometimes you just can't run every game if you have two ice on every server it's very hard to make let alone a tunnel vision deck profitable it's about being uncomfortable but making your opponent more uncomfortable they were probably more uncomfortable I had to play my bad deck to offset your bad deck hey cole good game cabinessa 67 all right we're gonna see a world tree if i if i if i have any guess hey 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 dear thanks you too Excited to see this deck. The Liberties is something to think about. Yeah, it's something I've noticed when I played like uh, Sable. Like if we're running career fair anyways, like it's hard to put cards that only get paid off of running because sometimes you just can't do it. Yeah, this is going to be a world tree. I, I wonder if they fixed on JNet. Let's see what Deer's up to. Uh, hand is fine. Hand is fine. It's a bit of a stream, but I honestly forgot most of it. It's for the best. All right, let's go. Hey, Loathing. Hey, Andre. Been a while since I've been here live, but been watching your YouTube. Oh, hey, cheers. Welcome to Twitch. We, you can, we stream on YouTube, by the way, too. You probably know that. Uh, but if you're comfortable hanging out there, it's a good spot. Hey, Andre. Excuse me. How many games in is this? Of uh, Iswak, three. Of Netrunner today, five. That's my guess. This agenda makes me think about no ice. Shinteki never advanced with moon pools. Everyone loves me. <laughs> It's a really funny way of putting it. Um, yeah, I, I do think the trap no ice thing is like totally reasonable in this ability, but I don't know if it's better than P. What pressure is Cabanessa going to put on? Literally no idea. No, no clue. Let's go back to ops. How do you open this thinking? How do you open this hand? I'm kind of tempted to open with spin dock. Like we have a vampire Onasa, but like figuring out where to put vampy, I, I don't know. Like R and D HQ, we probably want it for the remote server. Love a good one, turn one thing. Yeah, this guy, he's always the one behind these turn one things. Welcome to Matchball Boat, all the ob time, all the time channel. <laughs> all right, I do think we can push behind the vampire, but we actually don't have the credits, so maybe that's a bad idea. Could we have done just install advanced events hybrid? Yeah, maybe. We also don't have ice, but I'm not sure we want vampy on the remote server. Probably do. Better put the ice on HQ. At this point, because we drawn with Spin Doctor, yes, I would. Because I'm assuming that's where they run, and now we're protecting the uh, Rashida. As much as we had the Anoetic, at this point in our limited testing, I have very low confidence that the Anoetic Void is a playable card. But we'll see. I need to build a, world, a wood tree deck. Was thinking about Apex for the extra challenge. 
I think Apex can do some really cool things with World Tree, especially if you can turn off your ability during a run, which is ways to do that. But the big thing with Cabinets is you have access on on the call to World Tree eventually to set up, but also you have access to Mayfly and then Flame Out, but also it's just like Nanook is really good. This is a good engine as well. And what if Void won a game for my opponent and start up earlier today? How so? Regenesis? I think All Central seems like a priority versus the world. Uh oh yeah, that's a good point. It's just I feel like it might be too slow. And I worry that they have like a late game Doom engine and we have to kind of beat that. So yeah, I think you're not wrong. I just I don't know how quickly we can do that and afford to res it. You're right though, if we make the runs difficult, the world tree does not trigger very quickly. That was a good draw, I guess. Still not convinced DNA would have been better than this. Or the other way around. Very confused. Yeah, okay. So we might just see um right here a flame out onto uh sorry, it may fly onto this flame out. I think it might be expensive to Nanook right here. SMC from Cabanessa hosting it using the two credits this is going to be what um a world tree looks like i've seen these before it's really wild isla who's meant to be the botanist is probably like the last runner to consistently play world tree i don't know maybe you can get it early in hand but this is gonna be a world tree if we ever seen one dna drain six card has been underrated for years it does drain six it's pretty good yeah, there you go. World Tree. It's here. This card's absurdly powerful. So they can trash the Harbinger to get an instant speed, something like a Reaver. So they're already set up. And this is like, you know, why they can play this massive deck of 67 cards and feel good. But yeah, now we need Ice of Everything. And if we Ice of Everything, their engine falls apart. Let's draw some of our good old half runs. No, just Thimble Rig. No. No, please. We need real ice. We have a reasonable amount of it. How... How did it come to this? Server 2. They probably want to run HQ2. Like, we've drawn a lot. We've drawn a lot. Uh, two NGOs is a lot. I feel like the regolith at this point, we'd rather do the NGO. Eh, I don't honestly know. I see now why people want to play World Tree. It's because it's the coolest card. It is so cool. This might be upsetting to see me throw this out, but, like, I really don't know how we can throw out our hand to support this. Like, it just gives you the flexibility to play with the whole deck, right? Like, any card. Like, oh, I can trash my pawn shop to get something. Cyberdelia, I'm surprised to see that in a deck of this size. Mayfly, put that on the good old flame out. And the idea is that when the run's successful, you trade the flame out for, like, anything. So here they have seven credits. We're still going to res this thing. Like, that still attacks. But the idea is that the, it's important to know that the, the Mayfly gets trashed when the run is over. Not uh, when it's broken. It's not like a fairy if that's maybe too old of a cut. So this was seven credits and they still have to spend one. And But this will become like a Harbinger, which powers their engine. Or an Imp or a Parisha or something like that. Now the Mayflies are limited. So they're eventually going to have to, to, oh, wow, Echelon. They're going to uh, transfer to or transition to like a full Breaker Suite. Echelon's a good start. Uh, in terms of sentries, we have two Anansis, and right now, uh, Echelon does not deal, deal with Anansi anywhere near well. Now, it looks like what we have what we need. We want an ice for archives. We'd be really happy to draw Bathonomous. Do we Anansi archives, or do we Anansi the remote server? I think we Anansi archives. But no, then the Thimble Rig is. How do we lose? Null Signal makes you pronounce all this hard names, but they can't call it Yggdrasil. I'm surprised they did not call the World Tree Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil, but I, I wonder if that just makes it more representative of more cultures. You can use Thimble to fix later. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's true. That's true. Do we want to get a 2 2? Yeah. Yeah, we'd consider it. We have a spin doctor. We want to get something to spin doctor back. We also can get our anoetic back if we uh, seamless the hybrid next turn. They've seen two Rashida so far, so like I don't know if they run this. I might just look like a Lacosta. Reaver, three credits on a card draw. 47 cards left. I think they're also a world tree in some versions of Hindu mythology. Yeah, cool. Or like, I think Elden Ring. I'm not, I'm not sure I understood the lore in that one, but uh, they're derived from the same ethno-linguistic group. That's super cool. It's the world tree uh, from Elden Ring. I love the idea about being really condescending about Elden Ring lore constantly. 
Now, of course, when we score the hybrid, it has to be a face down card, which is kind of a bummer. Whoa, they're just letting it fire. What about a Ben Musashi? I do not like Ben Musashi that much. I feel like Ben Musashi is just like comparable to a, to a Hokusai grid, but unfavorably. Or a price tag unfavorably. Because it allows them to not take the damage. Okay, apparently Vampirinosa is good enough to let it fire. That's surprising. Learning that all currents are banned in standard was kind of shocking, though it seems to make sense. Yeah, this is a pretty long conversation, but there's some just inherent problems with currents. Uh, inherently, wow, yeah, that's probably worth it. Uh, I wonder if the DNA tracker would have gone there. Inherently, um, you kind of need to have currents in your deck, or you could just lose to some very powerful currents. Currents weren't well distributed, and then you're kind of forced to print currents for the history of all time, so there's a lot of reasons why not. Morgan was saying that they didn't want to call it Yggdrasil because it wasn't unique and because they didn't want to draw from a specific myth. Okay, that the first part's really cool. The second part, that tracks as well. All right, well, La Costa waiting room. Something like that. Hey, Owl Silence. So glad I've caught the stream live for once. It's 4 a.m. in the UK and it's freezing cold. I hope you're, you're keeping warm. Welcome to stream. I know I always stream at times that make no sense for literally half the, the physical planet, but I'm um, glad you can make it. It's very kind to say hi. Hey, Bilby, can't wait to see a multi-tree drifting situation since it's not unique. You can use one tree to trash the other tree. The tree cannot trash itself, but it is free to trash other trees. I wonder if it's ever worth to do multi world tree. There's a chance you could thin your deck and pull trash a program to get a world tree and then next turn trash that world tree. Like that might make sense. I wonder if they're just going to keep checking the server. Maybe we did the coolest thing ever and just forced the, the situation because we are. How many mayflies in are we? We're, this is the second mayfly. And like the palisade is just taxing enough. Oh, imagine running into a Nazi on archives. Imagine. Imagine us losing all our credits because we resident in Anansi and Archives. Maybe that's the best place for this, where they least expect the spider to be lurking. In the furthest left corner between the Fire Unbroken subroutines and R&D. Alright, that's seven credits. That feels like that's probably a winning trade. Actually, looking into on wiki, some Siberian native people also have similar ideas. Explains the relevance of the set. Cool. I wonder if Liga's art prompt specifically um, has any reference to uh, a certain culture's world, world tree. So already two MU, four MU, and world trees is tough. Yeah, but you, you're you not playing three Cyberdelia and then a boat. Uh, maybe you can do it. You got to melange three clicks next turn. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to recover from this unless they run this and then we're destitute. And they have a unity. Like they built their Doom Rig. Uh, Cyberdelia makes everything way cheaper and they have to consistently be running. But like they're doing a good thing and we're just trying to struggle to have a relevant idea ability. Like that's the thing that I don't like about Acewalk. The games that you lose, the ability might not fire once. And that's just a bad feel. Like I like doing my ability. It's why I play a certain corporation. Obviously it changes how they play. But I don't know. I want to fire my, my corp ability more than once a game. Uh, huh. Hmm. All right, well, let's see what they did. So, Aesop's for Flame Out, Kappa for Mayfly, make a run. Yeah, you should. Why did they lose a click? Click, click, click. So, is Flame Out, Mayfly, do slash bug, must have misclicked. I don't know. It would say in the log, right? So we can't afford the symbol rig. Oh, do you leave us the single actions? Now this is gonna be an agenda steal considering we haven't drawn any. Okay, we're fine. Do slash bug. I don't know what slash bug is for tracking purposes. We'll see if that works. It's gonna be just like, oh, the opponent did something bad and then deer's gonna be embarrassed. All right, we need to get money. They think that this could be a bit too expensive. Now we get this one more time. 
Now the problem is like Thimble Rig is actually a liability because it generates them economy. How do they win? JNet bugs are everywhere. Yeah, it's a new set. It looks like a lot of them have been polished, which is really good. This is a liability, but uh, I honestly don't know. I slept in hello. Yo, as a channel, how's Friday? How's it going? Uh, oof. Oof, that's a remote server. At least they don't have a fractor. This could trigger. And so I'm assuming they use the Mayflies to bridge the early game, kind of like a boat. And I think it's just a matter of time before they sell the flame out to get a boat. Like we haven't seen a current yet, or sorry, a console yet. So if you overclock with the flame out, a boat comes down for free. Like literally free, free if you overclock this flame out for an endurance. And at that point, like, I don't know what we're doing. We threw out our most unfair card. All right, Harbinger's coming down. They did run out of Aesop's Fuel. You know, that is installed from Cabanessa's ability, so I'm assuming that Deer needs to make a successful run this turn. Uh, it's a Vampire and NASA. So this is the difference between this and DNA Tracker. I don't know if the math actually changes. We can't afford to res it, so we don't have to really consider anything here. But now the Reaver is going to disappear. Single Axis, it's a Harbinger. Sorry, <laughs> World Tree Trash is a Harbinger. They get a program here. Cleaver, and there you go. They're set up. Spin Doctor, that's going down. Probably. We have another Spin Doctor, so maybe not the Great Trash, but we have a good targets in there, so yeah, why not? But they have set up. It's turn six. Their turns are very long because they have a lot to worry about. I wonder how Isox would fare in a Mitosis Trap deck. I think much better. I just don't like playing it, but we probably will. But like, I don't know how to tax them out. Like, this is just going to be a grind of a game until they find their win condition, which is going to be multi-axis on R&D. I'm not actually sure what it would be. Uh, three, three, two, one, three. Like, it doesn't look like it's Shastushka. So how was sh now? So we should expect the engine thingy that boosts non-AI icebreakers, right? Uh, I think it's a possibility. And with 67 cards, I don't see why not. The problem with it is it takes up MU, so we won't see it immediately. Uh, they probably want a slot to constantly pawn. But yeah, I do think you're going to see the K2CP turbine. Ugly. This is ugly. The best thing we can do is force them in the remote server, which I guess we need to empty the remote server. My favorite bug I've run into, I res super deep borehole and automatically won. Sophie, yeah, we did that today. Uh, that was the only way we won that game. My turn started and it happened again. My opponent said you just won at the start of every turn. What we did is we wrote slash clear hyphen win in chat, and then it stopped doing that. But yeah, you can, you can win by a super borehole. Maybe we should, excuse me, maybe we should just go all in on rush and do vulnerability audits. So vulnerability audits is probably okay. I think we'd be better off playing send a message than vulnerability audit. I'd be surprised if we weren't. Okay, so this is one for each installed icebreaker. So they boost, they break this for five, well two for three. I'm gonna have to res it. I don't know if it's worth playing vulnerability audit, but I think you can just play all five threes and rush those out. But then you need to score two five threes with your ability. But I think if that's what you're doing, you probably could just play a trap deck. So Cyberdelia gave them back. It's only five to break, and they got two, so it's break for three. You maybe can tax them out by running them server two multiple times with NGO. It's like the best we have. Oh, Onicoms, they're, they're... Wow, I'm surprised. I thought they'd be on Endurance. Why are they not on Endurance? Maybe they could be two. We're not doing Nana Civic to keep them out. I missed the deck building. No, we're not, because we don't really have a lot of ways to get face down cards in archives. Wu isn't actually super rich because they spent so much money installing stuff. Well, kind of. Like, they have the best breakers. Uh, high strength barriers we don't have. But, like, Cyberdelia. Uh, she's getting, like... Wu's getting a lot of money. I do think you're right that we have to do install advance advance. I think getting a Lacoste and sticking it would be the best thing we can do. But, like, we have to force them through this really ugly. Palisade actually works really well with Cleaver. It is a three-credit tax. Like, that's fine. First time I res a vampy, my opponent pulled out an oiler and broke it for two credits. Felt really bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not clear whether DNA tracker would be better than this thing. Uh, at least um, in standard until DNA rotates. It's like super comparable. We've had to pay seven for this each time, and I feel like resing for eight would probably be, it would be better into it'd be the same into Unity. But yeah, oiler is not a good thing. So misdirection getting installed again. This is just either stuff we're overclocking the remote server. All right. Maybe they're not on endurance for similar reasons to why you're not running traps. So not running traps is like, you know, a different play style. Not running endurance when you're already playing this greedy shaper deck, like it doesn't make sense. Like you're already doing the core of this. It's like building a trap deck, but saying like, I'm not into Urtica. But I hear you. 
Thinking about what's a good scoring path, can we play the bad 3-2s to have hard to score 3-3s, three making them steal 4 agendas to win? Uh, we could just play food and play the same list, right? right? Like, a, we don't actually have to play the 3-2s for that. Endurance is just too good, even as high cost for one console really compares. Yeah, and like, particularly with World Tree, like, World Tree kind of just exacerbates the issue. Like, they could have overclocked out the Endurance for free from their deck. Like, it can be a one of. On account for the draw to defeat the Trash Engine? Yeah, I believe so. And I'm, I'm assuming that, like, they can run efficiently enough now, especially the Turbine is down. Like, fuck. Why are they not playing Buzzsaw? Like, Buzzsaw breaks Vampy for, for two. Like, what? Funny enough, the unity with the Serb Turbine actually doesn't tra change the uh, the break cost. But like, we congratulations, we've entered Doomrig. We've gone nine turns, and they've set up Doomrig, and now we have to win behind Ice. Maybe influence. It's almost definitely influence. I just think one influence is probably worth including, probably. But like, okay, thinking. Let's let's talk this through, right? So this set up relatively quick. We weren't doing anything that fast. We were trying to ice up everything, which seems somewhat important. But okay, so they break Palisade for one. They bring Vampy for five. They get money back on this one, so it's not that expensive. Eventually, they'll run out of stuff to pawn, I reckon. I just don't know how long that'll last. And like, can they just let us score an agenda? I have a startup deck using Dao that's similar to this, minus the World Tree. You should play the World Tree then. <laughs> the World Tree is a lot better in standard when you have access to like Reaver, let alone. um. Uh, Harbinger. Harbinger is really good with the World Tree, right? Because it's something that you can World Tree and then also get value from. And that's like kind of rare. There's not a lot of them in either format. I think Mayfly and then uh, also in Standard, you have access to uh, Flame Out. Flame Out is huge for this sort of deck. I'm just, I'm interested to see how they're going to. Oh, Pinhole. Cool. How they're going to. Uh... They break a Nazi for three, which is one credit. So this threatens everything, which is like really obnoxious. So we'll put back the spin doctor, we'll put back the NGO. Two for one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's the problem with that thing. K2CB is so whack. Anoetic, I don't think we can do the Anoetic. Like Bio Vault's probably just better. Maybe we can do the Anoetic, but like the problem with Anoetic is our ice is not taxing, right? Like they break this for one credit. They break this for like four-ish credits. Like they can let parts of this fire. Uh, so Anoetic is like only matters if your ice is particularly taxing. Oh, they actually are on Hushik. Wow. Okay. That's probably why they're on, on Unity Ocel. So three, 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 three. Okay. So we're going to lose quickly. That's fine. Endurance always saves so much money. It's almost worth taking in any deck. Oh, it's definitely worth taking in any deck. You save a lot of money. We're gonna res the thimble rig just so we have a thimble rig, but we have to like border control the Hushik because they probably only have so many of these, right? Well, they obviously only have so many of these, but like I don't know what the other one condition is. All right, well, swap thimble rig. That's probably the best place to put it. If we put it on the outermost, they can actually gain credits off of it. All right, well, so much for that. On an upside, if we let them through, the game would be over. So we played one Isawa. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is where Isawak feels really bad, where you just don't have a, an ability. World three, nice. Yeah, I, that's like a problem with Isawak. If like if you're not winning, you don't have an ability. We probably should swap those two. Actually, um, that was wrong. We'll swap them at the beginning of turn. It shouldn't really matter, unless they run back because it will shuffle. Regular, uh, there's an Obakata. They can steal it. I feel like World Tree is such a better way of buffing Shaper than Endurance was because it really facilitates Shaper play style rather than just being powerful. Uh, World Tree is going to get banned. <laughs> World Tree is 100% going to be banned. There's no way this card is going to get not going to get banned. There's no way that Netrunner can exist uh, going forward with this card being legal. And like, I mean that in the best way possible. Like, World Tree slabs. But like, there's no way. You can't have a card that says search your deck for anything, right? Like if Shaper just becomes, you know, a stack of all the best like tech cards, let alone economy, like that's it, y'all. I don't know. Like, I agree. It's much more interesting. The fact that it requires a run, fantastic. The fact that you have to trash your own stuff, really fun, really cool. 
but li there's like literally no way that this doesn't get banned eventually. It just has such a huge impact on the whole game. Better not have become a punitive deck before <laughs> before I get sleepy. Yeah, we have a punitive window here abstractly if we can hit summon it. Uh, we can do install advanced fans in the remote server again. It's pennies for them to check. Uh, we don't have an agenda. This is probably the best we can do, but even if they like run through this, like they could let us have an agenda. It doesn't actually win. I wonder how World Tree plays with Geist or something in Eternal. Uh, oh, oh, it's gone. They were set up. Is SMC standard legal? Yes, it's not in startup. I honestly don't know if World Tree and Geist is that impactful. Um, because you're not getting your trash can abilities, which means you're not drawing. It might not actually be that good. Yeah, forcing him to run this remote, like we're not actually actively taxing them out. SMC got reprinted in Ashes. Yeah, it's going to be in standard for a really, really long time unless something happens, but it's not going to be in startup. It's not in startup anymore. Seeing there are two camps of people, those who think World Tree is busting, those who are extremely underwhelmed. It's so strange. Like, you can trash any resource. They can trash the pawn shop to get any tech card. Like, a DJ Fenders could come down now. Like, they could just trash this to get a conduit. Like, the fact that they set up their breaker in a 67 card deck while still running our stuff and keeping their economy up in a 67 card deck on turn nine. It's more expensive for them to trash this. World Street feels like it should be in a world without SMC. SMC makes it easier to pull with Cabanessa. That's like for sure. You could all, you could just play rejig three times instead though. But like the SMC is narrowing now for deer or dead draws. So, so like the SMCs are not like the best thing in the list. Big decks are the way of the future. Yeah, maybe. How do we tax them out? Like Enigma is actually two credits. That's one of our best ice. Uh, this thing's three credits. Like eight for three, well, three for two. I think we'll just keep pushing in remote server, but like they can let us go. Like they are unrelenting on their attack for the server and they don't need to be like, they can let us again, seamless launch out an agenda and it's not going to have an impact on the game. If you want to play like a world tree with a new neutral runner ID, just play the best things in smash. That's what we did with, uh, when we played Nova on our last stream and it worked out like it really did just work out. And specifically in that deck, it's very overwhelming, but now they have only one ofs, like then you even more value the efficiency or the effect of World Tree. Cause it's like, oh, I need my one of this. And then you can go get it. In some ways, World Tree is the most powerful in Nova where your deck is only singletons. Shout out to Deer for sure. I've been janning six, nine obs, more room to ensure the chain doesn't break. We get 69 card ob deck living. Okay. Okay. They did not run the remote server. And so Rashida, which is going to draw us into agendas and they're just going to run HQ. Oh boy. They popped the no free lunch on our turn. Again, with Reaver that draws a card. If we get a Nisei. That's a cool ability. Now, Bio Vault, uh, sorry, uh, not Bio Vault, Bathonomous is one credit on every starter. I'm waiting for the Hardware Breaker 1x World Tree Spark deck to get refined and just break everything. I think you could consider playing a World Tree deck that runs uh, only that as a program. It's probably not good. It's honestly definitely not good, but it's like doable, right? Like you run Endurance, you run Boomerangs for days, uh, you can run uh, Gabali, Kangamato, you can run Botulus. Well, that's a program. You can't, can't run Botulus. Uh, you can run Poison. Literal poison. All right, an honesty for three. Okay, I guess you have a doom rig. What's really funny too is like people complain when Netrunner, uh, game's over. No, it's not over. Dang. Uh, people really complain when Netrunner becomes like about anything else besides ice, but like this is the problem is that if the game is just ice, shapers can do this consistently, right? Like you need to have things like, you know, reaper or like two lays ability or something like that like you need ways to make the game different you can't have a game where it's just this because eventually they break all your credit ice for three credits oh my god we got an avocado resing this actually does not help us because we have to double seamless it oh sick the ivic would be three credits and they break it for one credit <laughs> Give it for one credit. Help. Help.
All right, we have something here. We could win. We could win. We're on three points. We just got to score an oboe. We just got to get an oboe on Anissa. We got to get got to get the seamlesses back. Well, tree only limits fair decks like this. It will struggle against Dragon HHN prisons. To some extent, crabs, yes. I do think it's like you cannot play this greedy and run against HHN prison for sure. But on that note, too, it also allows you to pull your one of like Citadel consistently. Your one of your no free lunches. It does a lot for that matchup, too. But I agree. You're right. You cannot be too aggressive or too, um, you know, greedy, but you can still be very greedy. They're accessing with fewer than uh, four cards here. This is probably not correct because they can't steal a Bogata. But they went off of all of the th massive amount of three ones we, or two ones we have in the deck. So it's probably not that bad. And they can just run back. So like whatever. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a two one. Good game. We assembled a better fractor than Cliffy. Yeah. Bring me my Pharaohs. Not only did it cost them one credit, it would actually gain them two credits if they broke an Ivic. Yeah, that was that was over a long time ago, huh? It's 11.34. We don't have time to do trap deck. Sophie, nice try. That was the cool thing. We played a long thing. That's a sort of issue with this deck. Like, honestly, the Hushiks feel more like a courtesy. <laughs> I think you could deep dive, too. Like, why not? Yeah, they can play multi multi axis. They also can just like play a conduit because they can grab it consistently. Like, they have three more MU. Yeah, one of uh what's it called? Separatines do nothing. The corp defends with ice abilities and upgrades. This is the meta. I wouldn't say it's exactly that. I do think also this rig is like a bit like, I don't know, program destruction kind of helps, not entirely. The folly of big deck enjoys. Is it finally time to play Conduit? I think it might be okay. This deck can run really cheaply and consistently, but Conduit generally would pair really well with Ice Destruction. You're seeing very little of that outside of Hippo. So I, I would say it's surprising. The big thing though is like you can tutor it for very cheaply before Axis as well. Like Conduit generally you have to run with the click button on it, but the fact that the first Conduit run, it doesn't matter, means you can pull it from your deck for one credit. Like that's a good reason to run Conduit. Admittedly, you could still run Stargate there. Uh, the, you just can't get it down the turn that you're Stargate running, but yeah, influence, I guess. Never done Conduit. That one seems too slow, but it does have a fun interaction. Yeah, it's cute with... I've been trying this idea in startup. How's it going standard? Grim, bad, real bad. But I do think there's a lot of ways to build this deck. And we're building it as a Glacier deck, like a mid-range Glacier deck trying to score out our agendas and get our Icewalk ability. That is probably not good. And that's largely because the economy to support that and the Ice Suite to support that just doesn't exist. So it's not so much the identity, it's kind of just the faction as a whole. That's a bit of a struggle. Now, I think you can play a much slower Glacier deck and score in remote server with Ag Infusion. They got a lot of good tricks. That's a different thing altogether. It's harder to run the server. But I think if we wanted to build an Isawak that we think could convert the most Ws, we'd probably just play traps and do install advance advance and then just triple advance and then kind of make it on them to run the wrong thing. This deck is very slow. That seemed seemed okay. R plus really trash is a good. I believe that. Yeah, if you stick a Drago early, like this deck probably shuffles. Uh, shuffle, shop. If you can stick a Drago, this deck probably shuffle. Whoa, suffers. Uh, and that's, you know, things like that kind of keep it in check. But like, I don't think you see those casually on JNet. Galarun, Jumon. Oh man, Jumon would not have helped. But uh, we would have felt good if we scored a Jumon. We would have had that like abstract win. I don't know. In startup, it's probably harder. Let's look at a startup pool real quickly. Cheers. Thanks for the game. Play boat. Must be bedtime. Andre's falling apart. No, no, no. We don't have a stream next week, too, which is, you know, feels bad. New sets out. But uh, I'll be with my family. It'll be nice. Okay. Sure. Anika might be better for this deck. Maybe. It's, it's pretty big. I don't have any decks that do well against Drago currently. I'm not sure what's good versus that type. Kalana, are you talking about standard or startup? Because I don't know if you don't, if you've seen, like, if you go on twitch.tv slash worm, W-I-W-Y-R-M, uh, you can watch the UK Nationals. And the UK Nationals, the entire top was all 419 decks. Let's see if we can find it, actually. Always be running .net, uh, UK Nationals 2022. And like all the best decks there, 
are just like criminal decks and they have like massive amounts of pinhole threading they're playing deep dive or sorry not deep dive they're playing mad dash because you generally want to with the 5-3 agenda suite but they're running three copies of no one home right paragon as well yeah and that's everything like look at the top cut here like 419, 419, 419, 419, Zaya, Tag Me Zaya, Austin's doing great stuff. And then a bunch of other 419. But like the meta totally shifted from Worlds where everyone's on 419. And that's because everyone expected the top decks to be all of the, um, you know, what's it called lists? The, uh, the, 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 the Drago lists. And that largely worked out. Like the finals was this, I think on both sides. And you see this list, like it's, it's perfectly teched for the uh, R plus deck, right? Like a Citadel Sanctuary, three no free lunch. And then of course, two pinhole threading. That's all you have to do, right? Like running some combination of these cards and they're all one influence kind of gets you there. Citadel Sanctuary is also a nice touch as well because it makes it harder to fall into prison. Uh, but yeah, those are good. The commentators were talking about this too and I do agree with it. Like the issue is when you learn to play against this reality plus deck, it's not about the agendas. Like you're actively trying not to score agendas, which is wild. Like it just becomes like a real prison deck like back in the day where like the deck is running, the mind you, the NBN deck is only running six agendas and they're all three pointers and you're just trying to avoid them. Like the whole game is basically like just deal with the board because the corporation literally has no win condition to score out agendas. Uh, and so then you see they steal an agenda or they just stargate and leave the agendas in the bin and then like mad dash them. It's like very strange. It's like, I don't know. It's not very exciting to watch. It's kind of like two people real posturing real hard and then just taking part things and just rebuilding and it's not about accesses or like eh, there's a bit of pressuring in it it's, it's okay there should be stream up somewhere of all these top cut games i heard the commentary is pretty good yeah no it's great uh twitch.tv slash worm there's like a rotating cast of people who are doing it this will be in, in the youtube description if you want to watch it but uh worm this is uh jdang who does a lot of the streaming stuff for um uh what's it called oh man uh summer games done quick the games done quick stuff so a lot of good streaming setup and it's really cool you guys see cameras of folks and it's good. Commentary is great. I think on commentary here, yeah, it's Cable Carnage, B Blum, and I think also uh, I listened to Bridgman as well. Oh, you did this UI layout. Oh, get out. Sick. Well done, Cat. Oh, man. I want to build a deck tracker. UI layout's hard. I'm going to worry about that in a bit, maybe. Good stuff, Cat. Uh, Cat was also there. Cool. Anyways, that's what that is. So, yeah, I think it's still hard. And right now, Drago's pretty good because, again, people are, like, playing new decks and they're cutting the, like, kind of boring staple cards. Like, again, three no free lunch sounds wild. Uh, but that's, you know, it works. It works against this sort of thing. Cool. Anyways, I think that's it for today. Uh, we should have a video next week. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a gameplay video just because I spent a bunch of this afternoon capturing and I played Anarch in Startup and it went as expected. So I don't actually have any footage really to show. But we will have the other side again uh, with Jeff, Ysengrin SE. We did our tier list of corp cards. Again, take the comments here and, and you can comment in what you think about certain things, about how we're wrong, how we're right, stuff like that. Is Bridgman newer to competitive scene? I don't remember the Neverwinter X Stormlight fandom crossover in the past. I don't know what Stormlight is, uh, but Bridgman's been playing for a really long time. There's probably a joke here. Just, get, I, just as I get back at stream over, I'm not saying it's because of that. Can't wait to see the review of the runner cards. Yeah, it's it's... The runner card is actually, I think, like way harder to evaluate. It's also like three hours long, so buckle up. Um, I said earlier in the stream, the only card I think we might have misevaluated heavily is uh, Ausmoon Pula. Man, Pula? Ausmoon Pula. Uh, the criminal connection. I do think that card's probably a bit better than we ranked it, but um, there are some bad me please cards. That's for sure. Stormlight's a popular fantasy series. Bridgman's the translation of his name. Ah, very good. Thank you. Anyway, that should be up next week. I got to edit that together. Again, there will be no stream next week, and we'll be back the week after that for everyone watching at home. Hopefully, you're having good holidays. Uh, maybe you have some holiday time. Maybe you don't. Maybe you celebrate Christmas. Maybe you don't. Regardless, I hope you're doing well and having some time. Again, the days get really short, and it gets really cold out. So hopefully, you're staying warm and staying safe. Maybe you have some friends to hang out or just hang out in the social space online. Uh, get some games on JNet. Hang out in green level clearance. There's a lot you can do. And I reckon some people don't have the ability to hang out with friends or family at this time. I hope you're doing okay if that's the case. And on that note, we'll be back in a couple weeks. We'll be back. We'll be streaming before the new year. So we'll be here regardless. Read Stormly. Then I have to read a book. Man, it's a really bad look that I, I'm, I basically don't read books. Uh, I should fix that. At least for Patrick. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, happy holidays. It's Hanukkah as of Sunday. And that's a little bit. I'm wearing my... My Christmas cat shirt, which is good stuff. Take care, y'all. Hope you're enjoying the weeks. See you in a bit. Ciao.